Hello and welcome to One Stop Co-op Shop Streamed, your one stop for co-op news and playthroughs. And today I am playing through Imperium, and specifically Imperium Classics. So I am, uh, there's Classics and there's Legends. Classics kind of deals with the more traditional um, classic empires, which in this case I am playing the Celts and I am playing against the Scythians. So um, you take more traditional, and there are a lot more options, actually. They're not on here anymore, but there are many more options for um, classics like the Romans, the Greeks, the Spartans. Lots of options here. But if this is your first time, don't worry about it. Uh, I will explain a little bit of the rules, but this was by popular demand. I actually asked um, today what people were more interested in seeing, and this is what came up. So uh, lots of interest in this one. I know there's a lot of interest in the solo community in this game. Um, a lot of people are liking it solo. Uh, I will give you my impressions. I played it once multiplayer at three player and I've played it a couple of times uh, solo. And then after our game today, I will talk to you a little bit about my impressions. But let's talk about what's going on with your civilization. So you are gonna have a civilization. This is kind of a deck building game where you are building your deck up, but it's also a tableau cards in front of you. And basically you're gonna be trying to conquer different lands and as you put those land and it's very abstract as you put these lands in front of you then you're going to play your glory cards which will discard all those cards again and like get you um some of these cards over here which are like kind of the major victory point cards in the game and this is kind of a euro -y, most victory points win but not exactly um like i said it's tableau building you have resources which would be tokens in the game um these are like victory point tokens here this is representing your population and some of your building materials over here this is your deck of kind of the things you can do at the beginning of the game so you draw a hand of cards and these cards will all kind of give you different actions so this is like one of the lands celestia over here that you can uh you know, put in front of you and that'll be part of your domain. Um, you can have unrest cards and these are cards you'll need to get rid of throughout the game or as you'll notice in the lower right of that card, they're worth negative two victory points at the end of the game. So each civilization, so the Celts have their own very specific cards that go into their deck, although some of them overlap with cards that other people have as well. Like everybody has kind of an, a conquer option. Everybody's got potentially some, potentially no one rest. So if you look in the lower left, the reason there are green slashes there is because those are your cards that go in your deck. And it's actually pretty clever how they do the setup stuff. Like there's a card for your civilization and that's got its own symbol. So you put that down, you shuffle all the blank cards, blank meaning, you know, just the green bar. Then you put the dot one here and then these are kind of tech upgrades that you get for free and they'll go into your deck as you deck yourself. So every time you go through your deck, you're going to get more of these upgrades for free until you finally get this Celtic gold over here. Um, after you go through six cards, the seventh one will be that. And then you're going to go from a barbarian horde to an empire. And that'll let you play different cards and also buy different cards as well. So you start off as a barbarian. Everybody does. But at some point, you're going to upgrade to being an empire. Uh, so you kind of start off as a small nomadic clan, and then as you get bigger, you're going to be able to, when you go through your deck, since there won't be any of these cards anymore, every time you go through your deck, you'll be able to develop one of these, like, upper level technologies, and you get to pick, but you do have to pay the cost as well of getting these, uh, upper level technologies when you get there. So the way the game is played is very simple. So it looks more complicated than it is, but basically you are gonna be getting these things. There's some uncivilized places. Uh, oops, so that's uncivilized. This is like green, uh, green leaf here. There's civilized, which are the columns. And actually you'll see those symbols here as well. And then there are like different landscapes again, like the one we had in our starting deck that you will be able to acquire into your deck. Um, so those are different uh, types. And then you have over here, I forget what these blue flags are called, but they're basically victory point cards that also help you. Um, you know, they, they're they're pretty good. <laughs> and then you have these major victory point cards over here. Actually, let's, let's see what they're actually called. So you got tributary. So there's people under your nation control. So those are tributaries, which are the blue ones. And then fame are the final purple ones. And then of course you have these unrest cards, which are all the same, but basically you can play them out of your hand um, by either getting rid of a, a one of your civil or population or discard two cards or you can pay materials to get rid of them as well. So you can do things to get rid of them. 
Uh, so, Dr. Dan says, hey, Peter, uh, this is solo slash competitive, right? No co-op option? That is correct. So, there is no co-op option, at least at this point. Um, but you are building your own civilization, and, uh, yep, yeah, tonight we are playing the solo mode, obviously, as one-stop co-op shop. So, when it gets to your turn, you're going to have a couple different options. And they actually have a pretty good, actually, let me show you the official player aid. This, I don't think is good as the ones on Board Game Geek. And honestly, the hardest thing I had to learn were these words here, which seems silly. Because there aren't a lot of words, but they're very similar. And they all do kind of different things. So, uh, for example, acquiring a card is different than breaking through for a card. And if you'll notice, there are, a lot of times it'll say acquire or break through. It's the same thing you're basically getting cards but it does different things so acquire is select a face up card from the market into your hand and any tokens and any unrest it comes with so unless it is one of these let me get the right name for this like landscape tiles regions <laughs> the yellow ones are regions so unless it's one of these regions it's going to have an unrest so as you expand your empire it creates unrest within your empire you're welcome dr dan um so it, it creates unrest within your empire. So as you expand, your people don't necessarily like that. So you're going to have to do things to get rid of the unrest as we talked about. So when you acquire a card, you take the card itself and the unrest. And you'll notice this one actually has a victory point on it. The reason is at the beginning of the game, any of these civilized places that don't also have an uncivilized option always come with a victory point. And why is that? Well, you'll notice it's got this empire symbol in the corner here. That means I can't even play this until the second half of the game or whatever. It could be the second quarter of the game or the second three quarters of the game, depending on how quickly I get there. Um, so I can't even play this card until I get to that portion of the game. Um, so it's kind of a dead card in my hand. There will be cards also, you'll notice, actually you notice two of them in my hand that have these axes, which means only you can only play those when you are a barbarian at the beginning of the game. So those, be, you know, kind of age themselves out as the game goes on. But, so like I said, these keywords are the hardest part. So that's acquire, but breakthrough is very similar. Select a card from the market into your hand, face up or face down any tokens, but not the unrest card. So in this situation, you not only can pick from these piles here, uh, of these face-up cards, and you will not take the unrest if you do a breakthrough, but you can also take some from these face-down piles. And if you look right above, it tells you what type it is. This is, so there, based on player count, there are six cards in each of these decks. You notice there's only five because one has been dealt out here. And uh, the rest of the cards of those types are shuffled in with these, uh, whatever the purple things were again, I'm sorry, the names are <laughs> eluding me, tributaries. So with these tributaries, they're shuffled into this deck here. So this could be kind of anything that comes out for these two, whereas these over here are going to very specifically be uh, these uh, either civilized, uncivilized. Oh, regions, look, right above it, main deck, fame deck. Wow. All right. I really like that. <laughs> so how does the game end? The game ends uh, when you either run out of cards in the main deck or when this fame deck runs out, or if I've gone through all of my cards here and bought all of my upgrades over here, the game will end. So I still haven't told you really what happens on the turn, but I did tell you the part that I had the hardest with, which is these keywords again, because they're very similar. And then where does it go? Okay, these go to your hand, but sometimes if you abandon something, you move it to the discard pile, or you could turn it somewhere else. Exile, it's placed next to the main board. Uh, find, you can search your hand, draw a discard pile or nation deck. Um, free play, well, all right, so garrison, you place it underneath a card. Uh, history, you place it underneath your main civilization card. So there's a lot of different keywords words and there's not a lot I guess but they gave me the hardest time when I uh, first played it like abandon is you place an ongoing card in your discard pile recall is place an ongoing card into your hand um, so there are very similar things and they use words like solstice and things like that for things that just happen every round um, so but we'll talk about all these different options all right so on a player turn what are you gonna do Oh, we got lots of chat going on. Celia says, hello, Peter. This is an awesome game. Yes, I am uh, very excited. I've only played it a few times now, but uh, I've had a lot of fun. And Adam says, which TTS mod is this? I will link that in the show notes. But if you search Imperium, uh, you shouldn't have any problem finding the mod. 
Um, I certainly did not. Um, it, it's the scripted one that has both Legends and um, Imperials. But again, I do own this game. So we show off games on TTS here because it's way easier for me to stream. But I will not show off a game that we don't own, and I do own this one. So Ryan says, hello, 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 Ryan. Celia says, I don't think the physical copy of the game comes with those aids, correct? No. Actually, I got these from, uh, and actually this mod doesn't come with these player aids either. I got these from Board Game Geek, and I uh, just snipped them and uh, uploaded them to the mod. Uh, I do have physical copies in the other room where my, my copy of Imperium is. Um, that's where I played that, but I found these very help, uh, helpful, especially these keywords. And if you want, I can actually put the links to the player aids uh, in the show notes as well. So just come back and check after the stream and I'll put it up within you know 10 minutes of the stream ending. So on your turn, you're gonna do one of three things and it seems way more complicated than it is. 99% of the time you're gonna activate. What does that mean? You do three actions and you can exhaust up to five abilities. Uh, and then you play a card, uh, then you place any cards in your discard. Uh, unless it's continuous. So as you're taking your actions, you're gonna discard your cards. Um, and then at the end of your turn, so that's 90% of our turns we're gonna activate. Then we also have a cleanup. Uh, as soon as we're done that, we're gonna add a victory point to any card on the market. So it'll make it more attractive for other people, including ourselves when it gets back to our turn. That's the first thing. Then you're gonna clear all of your action icons and your exhausted icons. You're gonna put them back on your player board and then you discard any number of cards from your hand because again, you're only gonna play up to three of them. Potentially there's free actions and stuff. And then you're gonna draw back up to your hand size of five, which could also be more. Um, and then the box is gonna go and they're just gonna activate their cards that they have face up here. So this wouldn't normally be in a multiplayer game here, but this is here in a solo game. Uh, I am playing, by the way, the median level. So there's five difficulty levels. The first three, or the first two kind of are the easier variants. This is standard where you have five out, and then you could even have up to six cards out um, for bot activations. So most of the time when we activate the bot, they're gonna do four activations. In the easier versions, they're only gonna get three activations and go through their deck a little bit slower. So um, I just went with the standard difficulty here, but that is one of the nice parts is you can vary difficulty pretty easily, not only based on that, but based on what civilizations you play against. Each game's gonna play very differently, and the base game does come with quite a few of them. So he says, ooh, I will print those out for myself. Thanks, Peter, absolutely. No, they are very good player aids, and they're basically the top ones on Board Game Geek. I usually start at like the most starred ones, and I work my way down. So uh, these were definitely the most, uh, the nicest ones and I actually believe you can see this is in red and this is in red I actually think this is one player aid I just zoomed in on the keywords because again that is the thing that has given me the most trouble uh, but this is kind of for the multiplayer game uh, it's a nice player aid because it shows you what to do or one of these showed you how to set up I think it's this one on the other side of these keywords it showed you set up and everything how many cards go in each pile it was really nice uh, which you know all the things you need in a player aid I, I really appreciate that but this I, I put in for the bot and again the bots turns a little bit different than ours but uh, it's still pretty straightforward but let's talk about our civilization the Celts over here um, so if you notice in the bottom right over here and actually let me just zoom in right over here there's a star times victory point so again this is a victory point game you're trying to get victory points you'll notice some of the cards that you get one victory point that's a star victory point and we'll explain that later uh, victory points over here victory points over here these um, what are they called regions don't have victory points but again and negative victory points on the unrest so most of your victory points are gonna come from some kind of a card or these technology upgrades you get later will give you uh, more upgrade or victory points. So this is star victory points. So it's one victory point per green card that you have in your deck at the end of the game. So, and that's not only your deck, but it could be in your archives, which is what's buried underneath your um, player card here. So anywhere in your deck discard pile wherever at the end of the game for each of these green cards you're going to get a victory point so we're actually going to start do i have any of these green cards in my hand not in my hand but maybe I have some in my deck over here because we draw five of the ten cards you start with but we can also exhaust so we have these five exhaust markers 
there are some abilities that tell you to exhaust them. It says exhaust. When you acquire a green card or break through for a green card. So remember, acquire means you can only select from the face up green cards, which we have options here, here, and here. That was just luck. Again, this is a mismatch of everything. It just happens that there are a lot of green cards. Hey, good for us considering we are going for green cards ourselves. Uh, when you buy uh, acquire, you get the unrest card with it and you can only choose from the face up. For uh, Breakthrough, you don't get the Unrest cards with it, and you can choose from the deck as well. So when you do either of those things, our civilization says, uh, exhaust this card. So you put one of the exhaust markers on it. Each other player takes a Unrest. So you can give other players Unrest too. So the Celts really like going for these uncivilized cards and using them to cause Unrest in our neighbors. So these are our five, and again, you can exhaust up to five cards, but once this card's exhausted, you cannot exhaust it again. So this just lets you exhaust five different things throughout the game. Then we also have three actions, and most of our card plays are actions. So to play any of these cards, we're gonna take an action, and we'll go through what our cards are. All right, Unrest, really you're just trying to get rid of it. You can, again, for one action, you can use, and we do start with stuff, by the way, which will also be in the lower right here. It's probably easier to look at. So you start with resources. You start with a victory point, two population, and three building materials over there. So this says for if an action, we get rid of one civilian, discard two cards, or pay three materials to return this to the unrest pile. And by the way, I forgot to mention, if this unrest pile ever empties out, the person with the most unrest loses. Now that is not true in the solo game. In the solo game, if the unrest pile ever runs out, the player automatically loses. So we don't want to get a lot of unrest either for us or them. So if we start getting some, we need to figure out a way to get rid of them. We can either take an action to trash basically all of them in our hand, or we can take the action to get rid of it. All right, so the druids choose. You can either gain a victory point, pay a population to break through for green, which is good. Remember, we want green cards. Um, or return a uh, unrest card and gain a population. Well, that seems like a good option. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to take my first action. I like that action. Uh, oops, that's not an action. That is an exhaustion token. So that's one action token. To take this action here, I'm going to choose the last option. I'm going to return an unrest card. Badink, badink, badink over here and when I do that I gain a population so that is one of my three actions I get to take on my turn let's see what the other cards are uh, you may place a card oh and then this card gets discarded so as you play it it gets discarded unless you'll notice these little ongoing symbols in the corner unless it has an ongoing symbol and then it just stays um, all right so this looks like an attacky card uh, uh, Boudica Boudica, I guess, gain a victory point. Each other player abandons a yellow card, so one of their territories. Put this card into your history. So this, is, so when it says put it in your history, it means bury it underneath your play, your uh, civilization card here. And you still get points for it at the end of the game, whatever else. But basically what it's saying is this is a one-time card. Gain a victory point and get rid of one of their territories, slowing them down. I'm not quite ready for that yet, I don't think. Uh, so pay two population to acquire a yellow or purple or pay three population to break through for a yellow or a flag. Okay, so the other thing I forgot to say is you can turn victory points into population or materials over here, which is kind of cool. So you can turn a victory point into either one population or two building materials. Now that's not exactly true. You can't just turn them into something else. When paying the cost of something, you can pay this in addition to whatever else you're paying to change it into the other thing, um, to, to change it into one of these just while paying a cost though. All right, so that will do that. All right, so next thing I'm gonna do, do I wanna do this again next turn? I feel like I kinda do wanna do that. So let's go ahead and play Celestia. All right, so I'm gonna play this. This is gonna be my second action. And I'm playing this card right here. You may place a card of your choice from your discard pile on the top of your deck. Now this does slow us down. Remember, we wanna go through our deck quickly because the quicker we go through our deck, the quicker we get these upgraded cards, which a lot of times are better, but might 
actually be on rest or something else as well. But this is going to help build our deck because, again, we want to get to these endgame cards as well. But I am going to take these druids and I'm putting them back on top of my deck because that's what it says. You may place a card of your choice from your discard pile to the top of your deck. And then it says you can garrison a card. Remember how I said I didn't want to use this card right now? I'm going to garrison him. And he's going to go underneath here. He's not gone forever. So it's not like putting him in your, um, your history over here where basically you'll never see it again. This card, if this card ever disappears, goes to your hand, whatever else, all the cards in garrison under it will do the same. So most of the time, whenever you play one of these yellow territory cards, you're going to be able to garrison a card. So you're garrisoning these troops basically out here. Kind of gets it out of your deck for now. So that was our second action. We're going to take our third action, though. And for our third action, we are going to conquer. So you can play two or three to acquire one of those things. All right, let's see. I'm probably going to want to play three because I want to um, add those. Do, 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 do. Where is it? I, I, I want to break through, which means not get the unrest. So let's look at these green cards here. And if I don't like any of them, I can always take from the deck as well. Or I could take, wait, let's double check this card. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. It's yellow or purple. So actually, I want to break through, and I want to break through for one of these purple cards. Again, I forget what they're called, but I know they're really good. So I'm going to pay, actually easier to do it down here, one, two, three of my population. And I'm going to search, because there are none of those purple flag cards up here, I'm going to search through this deck. Now, normally what I do is discard, 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 until I find one of those purple flag cards, and then I would shuffle the deck up. But... Since we're on Tabletop Simulator, it's way easier to just do this. Looking through, looking for the bottom of the card to have a purple. Do, 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 do. Ah, there's one. There we go. All right. So just to kind of show you what these cards are, I definitely like these cards. All right. And because I already paid the cost, I did the action. I do that. And whenever you acquire a card, for the most part, whether it's through breaking through or acquiring it, it goes straight to your hand. So this card is now in my hand. So it says uh, free play gain one population and you'll also notice it's worth three victory points at the end of the game and it's a free play what does free play mean that means i've used all my actions doesn't matter it is a free action to play this card and i just gain a population so i spent three to find that card but every time they come up in my deck i'm going to be able to play them for free without using an action and I'm gonna be able to increase my population by one so like i said these purple cards or these flag cards whatever you want to call them really really good now uh, I did not acquire a green card. If I had, which are the uncivilized cards, then I could have given them an unrest, but I did not choose to play this card, which would have, oh no, that one wouldn't have given me. I thought I had a card option to gain one of those. I guess not. Anyway, all right, so that was my first turn. I've taken my three actions. So let's go to end of the round uh, stuff. So I'm gonna recall all my tokens here. So let's see what we do at the end of the round. All right, so, uh, and again, these are all the same. So let's look at this cleanup over here. So first, we're going to add one of those victory points to the market. And then you can put it to any card that way. So you want to put it on cards that you probably will acquire yourself later on. Then you get to clear your stuff. Well, guess what? I already did that. You clear your action and your uh, exhausted tokens. Then you discard any number of cards you want. I don't have any cards in my hand. And then you draw back up. So that's it. Now, I will forget this at least three times, I promise you, throughout the course of the playthrough to do this. But I'm going to put it on one of these green buildings here because I'm going to want those. So let's look at what the options are. So we got boats here. You can exhaust. So remember, put that little X token on it and choose. Recall a water place to gain two materials and a person or recall a wheat to gain an action. Well, let's look at my place here. It's got a bag on it. That's none of that stuff, right? So I don't have any of those materials. So that's not the best for me. So exhaust to gain an action. Wow. So she's out permanently and she just gives you an action. But during solstice, which means after the entire round, after everybody's gotten their action, so it's me and then the AI, we do solstice, you can either choose to take an unrest or discard two cards. So she helps you by giving you a free action every turn, but she's gonna hurt you by making you discard cards or take unrest, which some civilizations like unrest. I am not one of those civilizations. This again is an end game card because I can't even play it for a while. Let's see what this one does. Uh, during the solstice, you may discard a card. If you do, you can gain um, uh, either a population, a grain or draw a card. Oh, I like that. All right, so I'm gonna put my victory point on that. Could also have put it here. Ooh. 
The marsh does have a water symbol on it, and the boat said, oh, never mind. You know what? As much as I like this city, I kind of like the boats along with this marsh over here, because every time I play the marsh, I get to gain two and exile a card from the market, uh, and then you can garrison a card too. So exiling a card means getting rid of one of these, like this mysticism that I don't think I'll ever use. Puts it over here. There are things later on that can bring these back to the game, but for now it's exiling them out of the kingdom. Yeah, I think this boats with this uh, marsh over here is a pretty fun combo because again, I recall that. So again, keywords, recall. So you place one of those cards into your hand. So I just take it in my hand. It's not like I lose it forever. I don't have to discard it, any of that. I just exhaust this card to pull this back to my hand. Then I can just play it again that same turn. So I could play this, play this, exhaust this, then play this all in the same turn if I had both of those cards in my hand. And this just stays in play forever. And every turn I can exhaust it to pull the marsh back into my hand or pull whatever other card. And remember, every time I play the marsh, I get two materials. So as you could see already, there's some cool combos you can start building and you kind of want to start thinking about them early. So that is how our turns go. Uh, at the end of our turn, again, we are going to draw five cards. Normally we would only have five cards, but because I add that card to the top of my deck, I ended up or put that Druid's card back on top of my deck. Remember, we played that one last turn. I have an extra card, but we got some other stuff going on and we got another card to play for next turn. But again, all of that is for next turn. How do we play the AI turn? We roll a dice. We see what number comes up and the dice gets placed on that card number. In this situation, I got unlucky. It got placed on none of those cards. So they're going to activate all of them. Normally, they wouldn't activate whatever card the die was on, and then the one above it would get one of those progress tokens or victory point tokens at the end. Um, but unfortunately, I rolled a six, which means all five of them are activate. So I flip it over. Now, I do not have to do everything it says on this card. I don't have to read the bottom. I don't have to know any of that. Every AI civilization, I think this is why solo players like it, have their own special AI um, activations, what they do. Not only for their barbarian phase, but when they go later on into their empire phase, they have a different set of activations. So they adapt as the game goes on. So let's look back at what this card was again. So the only thing noticeable on this card in the upper left here is this ax. So if we look, we go top to bottom. There wasn't a sword. It's not a conqueror or an advanced card, right? Oh, it is an advanced card. So again, you go top to bottom. So we would have gone down to this little ax symbol and done what this said, but it happens to be an advanced card, which is higher on their priority list. So if able, spend four materials. Well, they have zero materials, so they can't. To break through for a civilized action. Otherwise, if able, acquire a green. So they're gonna acquire a green. Otherwise, gain a brick. So they are gonna acquire a green. That means if there is at least one green face up, they're gonna do that. And honestly, I don't remember the priorities for acquire because <laughs> all the bots I've played against so far have not done a great job of acquiring. So let's go ahead and check out the solo rule book. Sorry. Uh, do, 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 do. So changes to effects, acquire and breakthrough. When a bot acquires or breaks through for a card, it will always choose the card in the market that is worth the most points. In the case of a tie, it chooses a card with the lowest numbered slot. So again, card numbers, and this is, again is only solo stuff. So it's always gonna go to the bottom if there's a tie. Treat all star victory points as worth five. Treat all question mark cards as being worth the highest value for this purpose. So you definitely want the ones with the question marks. Treat each of those on the cards as adding one victory point to the value. Oh no. Um, if the bot breaks through and there are no eligible cards in the market, it takes the top card of the appropriate deck. If it breaks through for flags or a suit which the appropriate deck is empty, reveal cards from the main deck as normal. When the bot gains cards, add them to the top, or I'm sorry, to the top of the bot deck. So it's going to acquire a card, one of these green cards. And it did say acquire, which means it's going to get the unrest. So it looks, this is a star, meaning it's worth five, and this, I made it worth more, six, great. This one's worth one victory point and one. Maybe I should have stuck with putting the victory point on this, because now the bot is going to acquire this, which means it also gets the unrest card. Oops, I put acquire, it gave that stuff to me. That is not fair. That is what we in the industry like to call cheating. So we put this on top of the bot deck. The unrest, fortunately for us, goes on top of the bot deck as well. I'll show you what happens to that in a minute. 
but I believe it gave me this victory token too, which I don't get. They get it instead. So don't cheat. It's right here. It says <laughs> um, bot discard, or I'm sorry, uh, breakthrough, acquire, exile, but it says discard top of the deck, take an unrest, return. All right, so maybe that's something I have to do manually. Uh, oh, right clicking, I'm sorry, does that action for the bot. All right, so this goes to, wait, let's make sure that's all we were supposed to do. All right, so I gotta go back to, oops, that was them. All right, so we did an a, uh, advance here. So if able, acquire green. All right, otherwise gain uh, one of those. So you look at the first thing, nope, couldn't do that. Do the second thing, it could, so you don't do the third thing. All right, so that is it for its first card. And actually I am going to reset this camera because it is not where I want it. All right, so this goes right to the bot's discard. Let's go ahead and draw the next card. So mounted archers, oops, why am I drawing cards? Mounted archers, which uh, has the infinity symbol on it. So if I look again, as I go down, I know the infinity symbols on here. So discard the top two cards of the bot deck and gain two brick, put this card into the history. So again, because it's a permanent card, for us, it would be out there forever. Well, for them, they're gonna put it in their history, so we don't see that card again. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is discard cards. So this will, again, because the bot levels up the same way we do, they're gonna get these cards as they go through their deck. So they're gonna discard the top card from their deck. They do that twice. Then, do 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 um, They're gonna gain two brick. So we can just do that over here, one, two, brick. And then they are gonna discard that card from the rest of the game, so it goes to their bot history. All right, let's start going a little faster over here. All right, so it's got an infinite and an ax. Interesting, and it's a yellow card. So which one do we do first? Let's look over here. We got yellow before infinite before ax. So we do yellow. First thing they do is gain a population, then play this card and exile a card from the market. Uh, all right, so we will look at how they exile again in a minute. <laughs> uh, do, 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 do. And they say to play this card. So this card goes into their played area. And as you can see, they can gain stuff as well. And as if you remember, this card over here, when I played it, makes the player abandon their uh, population. Now, what does abandoned mean? I don't know. It's one of those words, one of those keywords, but there it is. Place a card in your discard pile. Boom, that's what it means. So, uh, I mean, I love that player aid for, for that. All right, so now they exile a card from the market. So when they're exiling, how do they choose that? Do, 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 do. And as you can see, these, rule chain, these rules are really easy to look up. Um, so exile, it's right here. If the bot exiles a card from the market, it places the eligible card in, from the lowest numbered slot in the market to the exile pile. All right, so that's it. The bot will never exile a card with one or more tokens on it. If all the cards in the market have tokens on them, it doesn't get exiled. Okay, easy enough. Boom, there's Scythians. All right, so they're just gonna take the low, the one in the lowest numbered spot and exile it. So, do do do. Take an unrest, return an unrest, refill the spots, discard to the top of the deck. So we are just gonna exile this card. First card, and again, it just goes to this exile pile and they refill it. Now, these yellow cards, remember, territory cards, or region cards, sorry, don't have unrest, but basically every other card does. But, ooh, here's another one of these flag cards. I love these. So here's Quinn over here, passive. Increase your hand size by one. Yes, please. And it scores your victory points. One victory point for three infinite symbol cards in play. In play at the end of the game, excluding mountains. So you want a lot of cards that go in play when you have Quinn. Um, so it's only one victory point for every three, but I think the passive increase your hand size is worth it, even if you don't get much out of that. But we are not done yet. They still have two more cards to do. Well, one's an unrest, that's easy. You just discard it. Uh, and then we got an infinite and an ax. So it's gonna go to the infinite. We remember priority order. Let me just make sure it's not an advance or a conquer. No, it's a tense. Uh, so infinite, discard the top two cards of the bot deck. Now I'm not gonna show you. We're just gonna trust it <laughs> up here. Uh, gain two resources over here and put this card into your history. So again, this card gone. So the bot deck is thinning out. So their deck is gonna get less and less as they go on. They only have nine cards in their deck now. They are the same as us as soon as they run out of cards. Uh, so right now, this is gonna happen to them. 
So we're going to refill their slots. When we do, this top card is going to go into this shuffle pile. Because there's only four, but they got five spots to fill here. So let's go ahead and refill and see what happens. That goes in, and that was an unrest too. So we got lucky that they got another unrest. But again, they're just going to get rid of it here in a minute. Now, when they're done, wherever this spot was, they would have uh, taken a uh, victory point token and put it on top. But remember, it was a six. So that's a whole lot of nada for us, unfortunately. Uh, and then let's see what would normally happen after the bot turn. It's not really much else. Uh, do, 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 bot cleanup, they do that. You replenish the card row. If their deck is empty, you add a card when the dot card is added. So as soon as they add this dot card, same as with us. So they got six more to go through plus this glory card. As soon as this card gets added, they go from Barbarian State to Empire State as well. Not the Empire State, New York, which by the way, those of you outside the US won't get it, but New York is called the Empire State. All right. <laughs> Don't know why random useless facts coming out in the middle of the stream today. All right. So I am, they're done with their turn. I am done with my turn. Um, and it'll go quicker from now on because, uh, well, maybe not my turns because I might be thinking. So I can gain a victory point. Oh, I can do this again to get rid of this unrest card. And I think I want to do that. Boom. First action. We're going to play the druids. I'm going to play it right to there to go ahead and get rid of this unrest. And you'll notice this unrest card is part of my deck, but it is now in the middle. Anybody can get this card. Um, and again, you you want to do the, get rid of those so that way the game doesn't end with a loss there. So you need to get rid of those unrest cards. All right, so I got some stuff going on here. So I got this one, which I can exhaust uh, and pay a victory point to get two civilians. I mean, I like this just to get it out of my deck, if nothing else. So I'm going to go ahead and take an action to do that. This is going to be in my play area now, and it is no longer in my deck because it's in my play area. And if we remember, this card over here lets us, um, we get victory points for every three cards in our play area. So that might be something to think about. Uh, let's see if any of these things will let me get that. So gain two uh, materials, steal one from each player. They definitely have materials uh, with at least one uh, territory in play, which they do have, and steal victory point from each empire. So you do all of that stuff. Now, you'll notice you can only do that as a barbarian, though. That's a cattle raid. So if they're basically ahead of you, you're going to start stealing victory points from them if they're ahead of you and getting through their deck. Not that interested in that. Ah, here is the one I am interested in, although not necessarily. Because that green card I really want is gone. Now I got this stupid mysticism in the city, which is fine, but not exactly what I want. Uh, and I do have three bricks, so I could acquire, let's see, Solstice. You may uh, discard a card. Oh, I, I kind of like these. All right, so I am going to do that. So I have a third action. I'm going to use Advance. So let's go ahead and take our third action token, play that. I'm going to play Advance, again, right to my discard pile. I'm going to pay three materials, one, two, three, to go ahead and acquire this city. Now, when you acquire things, they go right to your hand. I also, unfortunately, get that unrest card. Now, it is the end of my turn. Just as a reminder, what we do at the end of your turn, I'm going to show all of it and then uh, do it. So I'm going to add a victory point to any card of my choice. Then I'm going to take back all my tokens to, to my supply. Then, uh, do, do, do. Draw back up. Wait, what? Put spent tokens back in the supply. Draw back up to three and five. I don't know what the difference is. All right, discard any number of cards from your hand and then you draw back up to five cards. All right, there's an important reason why it goes in this order and I'll explain it. All right, so first we're gonna put a victory token on something. Now remember, I want green stuff, although I do want this card as well. You know what, I'm taking a chance. I'm putting it on that one. Uh, oh, free play. I like that. Pay a brick and declare the following. One of those things. Reveal the top card of the main deck and if it matches that. So that's kind of a gambly card, but it is free. Oh, it's called gambling. <laughs> well, yes, it's a gambly card. Uh, so it is a free play, but you just kind of pick one of those things and hope you flip what you uh, picked. That's kind of a cool one. I might try to get that one later as well. Um, all right. So where am I at? So I already put my victory point token up there. You know what? I am gonna put it on gambling. I'm gonna gamble with gambling because if I get this, the AI thinks this is worth five victory points anyway because it's got the little star there. If we remember when they you know, do their calculation, they count this as five. 
So if they, you know, this thing will only count as two anyway. So I'm not going to give them the extra satisfaction of getting that victory point over there. All right. So I've played all of my actions. Uh, these are both cards in place. So now I get to discard. Uh, I am going to discard. I don't necessarily need that. Kind of want to keep this city. So I'm going to just discard my unrest and my cattle raid. So now you'll notice I only have one card in my deck. So I am going to draw up to five cards. But I already only drew one. So that means I get this top card, ooh, which is another landscape. Oh, that fishing boat would have been so good with that. But anyway, into my draw deck. Oh, here you go. And I'll just, now it's in my discard pile. And I'll reshuffle all of that. And I'll draw my final three cards. Uh, and then I will reset my, to oh, I should have reset my tokens first. I'm sorry. And here's why. So do, 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 I know there's a button. Ah, recall. So the reason is whenever you level this up by drawing through your deck, you put a little X here. Now that means I can't go through my deck again during my turn. So if I happen to draw four cards during my turn, I will not get that card there. Only after I reset the X will I then be able to get the cards from here again. So that's why the order is important. It's victory point, then recall your X's uh, and circles. So your actions and exhaustion tokens. Oh, did I acquire a green card this turn? Actually, I did. So when I acquired a green card, I'm sorry, should have done this. Exhaust, when you acquire a green card or break through for a green card, exhaust this and each player, wait, each other player takes an unrest. So I should have done that Sorry, when I acquired this city over here. I knew there was a, more of a reason to do it. So uh, I'm going to have the bot take an unrest. That goes right to the top of their deck. Uh, anytime they acquire cards, it goes instead of into their hand because they don't have a hand. It goes right to the top of their deck. Anytime they need to draw a card, they just draw it from the top of their deck. Um, and we can't make them discard cards because there's no real way to do that. All right. So as a reminder, AI turn. We're going to roll the dice. Put it on one of the spots. So this spot, so this place that I wanted before is going to get a victory point token on it. Hopefully I've got something that will let me acquire a blue space here, but we don't activate it. Uh, so we got the infinite Titan Shan. I believe infinite is before, yes. So discard the top two cards of their deck. So discard, discard. Um, and then they gain two brick. And yes, they end up with a lot of brick. They do get one victory point for every 10 resources they have at the end of the game. So that's good for them. And then we put their card into the history. Done with that one. So to the bot history. Then we have Nomads, which is a red axe. I don't think Nomads is anything. Nope. So if there's one or more yellow cards in play, gain one brick per yellow card in play. Otherwise, break, break through for a yellow. So that, again, would get them a yellow card, territory card. So they're going to get one brick for every yellow card in play. That includes mine and theirs. As you see, there are two in play. So, yes, this game does accelerate with multiple players where you're going to be getting lots of resources when it says in play. Now, again, for the solo bot, not a real issue. So this one goes to their discard. So they'll keep getting that one. Ah, there's a conquer again. I believe that is what we just did. Yep. So we already know what that does. It gives them two brick. And they are done with that one. Discard it. And then, oh, that's an unrest card. It just goes here. So as you can see, it goes a little bit faster later. Now, you will notice they are going to put a victory point on this card because this was there. We never activate this. So even if this was in the five spot, as an example, it would be moved to the one spot. Well, first, victory point goes on the five spot if it was on the five spot. And then it would be moved to the one spot. And then the rest of the cards would be filled in. But in the TTS mod, they just do that for you. They added that. They do that if they had advanced, uh, which they don't. So you notice their draw pile is empty, but until they need to draw from there, they don't advance to the next stage. That's true for us too. So your deck can be empty and you don't advance until um, that happens, which can be a good thing. Uh, so this is a free play. I'm just gonna get a civilian. But ink, but ink. Do do do. Okay, come on. Come on, purple card, get a purple. Ah, so this is your glory card. I'll explain that in a minute, but this is, well, I'll explain it now. So this card cannot be garrisoned, meaning can't be put under a yellow card. The way it works is you can abandon three yellow cards. If you remember, abandoning means putting to your discard pile. That includes all the cards under it. Remember I told you you can get that back? That's how you would get it back. So you could abandon three of these yellow cards. 
if you do, you look at the top two cards of the victory point display over here, and you pick to keep one of them. And they are all good. They're all worth like 6 to 11 victory points over here. And they might give you actions as well. So um, really, really cool actions over there. So this glory card is an awesome endgame card. Unfortunately, not great right now. So I'm going to play this one. So I haven't played any action. All I've played is a free action so far. So my first action, I'm going to go ahead and put this city out. I'm just building cities. I'm, I'm all over the place over here. So now, reminder, before my turn starts, and only because I'm the first player. So after everyone has acted, I am always the first player. We're just going to keep going around the table, around the table, around the table. So every time, in like a three-player game, it would be me, the next person, and then yellow. Then we would do these solstice actions again before it got to my turn as the first player. Um, so you do these solstice actions and everybody does it. You may discard a card to gain that stuff or even draw a new card. So I could like discard an unrest to get a better card or discard this glory card. Uh, every time there's a solstice, I can do that from now on. So I played that city card. That was it. So I'm going to play this because why not? Um, all right. So I'm going to pay a card for this or pay an action for that. And that says gain two bricks. I can do that. But ink, but ink. Then steal one brick from each player. Benink, benink. All right, uh, and that's it. So there are some nasty cards if you don't like that. Um, again, solo play, it doesn't matter. You're just stealing from the AI, but there are nasty cards in this game. Some people like that, some people won't. I don't mind it so much. All right, so now for my third action, I can't do anything with this glory card here. So I'm gonna take my third action to get rid of this unrest. Now, how do I do that? As a reminder, I can either pay one population or I can discard two cards from my hand while I only have one card to discard, so that ain't happening, or discard three materials. Uh, I'm gonna pay one population and get rid of this unrest card. My people are not unrested, they are well rested, as it were. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I did not acquire a green card, so I don't get to do my special activation here. So end of the turn, I'm going to put a victory point on there, but I'm also then going to recall all my tokens. I'll just do that first. So that happens before you go through your deck. Uh, oh, and I am going to discard too. The victory points, the first thing we do, but I am actually going to draw through my deck here and I'm going to draw another card. So before I do all of that though, I'm going to look and see which one I want a victory point on. I'm going to put another one on gambling over here. I'm gambling that that card will still be there. All right, so that is the end of my turn. Now I draw my four cards. Guess what? I'm through my deck again, so we're putting another card in here, and guess what? That's another territory. I know that makes three in my deck now because I got one in my hand. I got one on the table. That's a third one. So that glory card is now not as dead a card as it was a second ago. Although if I draw it right here, it will be. All right, so I've got options for my next turn. Do 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 do. Let's roll their dice and do some stuff. All right. So their first action is going to be nomads. All oh, nomads. I'm sure they say something about nomads over here. They do not. All right. So there is an other option, but let's see if there's anything else on this card of note. No, there's literally nothing on this card of note. So we look through all of this stuff and then we do other. If able, return a uh, unrest from discard. Uh, so we'll see if they have an unrest in their discard, which they wouldn't unless I gave them one. Uh, otherwise, if able, acquire a green. Uh, so they're going to acquire a green. So let's go back here. And I gambled on this gambling, but that ain't going to happen because they are going to acquire it. So they are going to get an unrest and a gambling on top of their deck. It's weird. They don't have a discard. So I don't know. I'll have to look that up. If anybody knows the answer to that, let me know. Because that's real weird. Because they would never have unrest in their discard. I don't think. Unless something says put an unrest in their discard. Is that what mine says? No, it says takes an unrest. So it would go to their hand, which would then go to the board. That's weird. I don't know how they would ever get an unrest in their discard. I don't think. I think that might be a, uh, a mistake. Uh, all right. But anyway. They're going to get to pick one of these cards. They look, this is worth one victory points. This is worth one, but it's got two victory points on it. So it's three. So they're going to acquire it. So I'm going to right click and hopefully this works. The bot gains it and the top card should be that unrest card. Boom. Exactly right. And then the one under it will be the card that they gained. And I guess they got the two victory points as well. Wow. This mod is actually really, really good. Um, so they're going to discard this. Then let's flip it over. All right. This is an attacky tack action. 
Uh, if there are one or more in play, they get one material per one in play. Well, they've got one and I've got one. Again, you just look at the territories with the yellow symbol up here, so they get two brick. Badink, badink. And then we discard it. Then they get an unrest, which goes there. Then they have an unrest, which goes there. So yeah, maybe in the old rules, the bot didn't put unrest there, but I'm pretty sure in the errata, that's what they do with those cards. Unrest. Under, so this is solo rulebook errata. Under resolving bot cards on page eight, add the following line after the sentence. You will only ever resolve this action once for each card, even if it matches multiple actions. Uh, if you reveal a unrest card, do not consult the nation specific reference table. Instead, return it to the unrest pile. Yeah, so I don't know how you get it in your uh, discard pile. Follow the rules as written. You would have carried out uh, other action from the bot. Yeah, so you don't do that. You just discard it. So maybe that was written uh, before you, because you would normally do other and then you would never get rid of those unrest cards. Uh, so when they reveal, they just get rid of them. But that's the AI's turn. Let's refill the spot. There's gonna be a victory point put on this two spot there because that die was two and this was in the two spot. You saw it got moved to the one. They draw a whole new set of cards and they did go through. So they're going through their deck, although we're a little ahead of them, I guess, for adding new cards. It doesn't mean they're better or worse. These are just new cards that they get in their deck. Those are shuffled up. They do have a special symbol on them. So if you look, they have a moon symbol. Remember how I said all the cards have a symbol? Oh, the bottom card's their dot card. Uh, do, 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 do. Wait, where's their dot card? Oh no, what did I do? Ah, there's their dot card. So let's shuffle these up. I'm gonna put their dot card over here and these goes perpendicular over top of them. Hopefully that doesn't mess up the bot scripting. Um, and we are good. All right, so now it is the solstice phase because every player has acted. We do a solstice phase. So I can discard a card to gain a population. I can do, get, gain a brick or just draw a new card. Uh, so, do I want to discard any of these? Uh, advance, pay for that. Druids, break through for one of those or return one of those. I definitely want to play that card, so not. Uh, pay two to acquire. Uh, so I definitely want one more population because if you notice, this one lets me pay two population to acquire one of those cards and I definitely want to. So I definitely, and then cattle raid, gain two, steal from each player with at least one. Yep, I could do that to steal more goods. So. You know what? I think I'm getting rid of advance. I don't need this. So I'm gonna discard that. So now I get my three plays. Let's start by, what's this one? That lets me garrison a card. Do I wanna garrison any of these? I don't think so. All right, I'm just gonna play that out. Uh, that is my first action. My second action, I'm gonna play this one. I'm gonna choose to, oops. When I discarded that, I should've gained something. I wanted to gain a population uh, during this. So again, Solstice. You may discard a card to gain one. Remember, I discarded that advance card before my turn even started. That was during the solstice phase um, to gain one of those things. I decided to gain a population. So now I'm gonna spend that two population for this card here. So I spend two population to acquire a purple. So acquire, remember, has to be face up. But just so happens Quinn over here, my boy is here. I'm gonna acquire that card. Now I do get the unrest with him. I don't mind. I'm not mad at Quinn. That's all right. So if I play him, I increase my hand size. So I've already played, that was my second action, that conquer action. So I can play a third action. And actually, if I'd done it in the other order, I could have actually put the unrest here under that card, but I didn't do that. Uh, choose to gain one. I could just get rid of this to, I'm gonna do this. So this will be my third action. I don't necessarily need Quinn. Oh, well, putting Quinn out now will increase my hand size. But the problem is then I would love to keep Druids and Unrest in my hand. So I'm actually losing two cards to my hand size. So I guess it's kind of six and one, half dozen the other, but I want Quinn out here so I can get him back faster. So I'm gonna go and do this to play Quinn over here. And again, Quinn just says, increase your hand size by one. So now instead of drawing to five, I draw to six. This cattle raid, I don't care about it. I'm gonna discard it at the end of my turn. I am going to get my tokens back. Uh, do, 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 recall the tokens. I did not acquire anything green, so I don't give, get to give them a unrest. And then I'm gonna draw up, not to five, but to six. But before that, I do have to decide where to put a victory point. 
thingy mabobber. So this one, gain three, an exile card from the market. Uh, I don't care about the exiling part. Uh, gain two, exile a card from the market and garrison a card. So really, I guess, what do I care about? Oh, that one comes with a victory point. This one doesn't. Um, yep, I'm gonna put that here so I can make it get a second victory point and that'll be worth two victory points if and when I decide to acquire that. And it gives me more than this one here. Uh, yeah. Uh, but it doesn't give me the symbols. So remember the symbols could be at the top there, could be used for boats or whatever else. So that's the negative, but I don't know. This one's got more positives for me. Now again, in the multiplayer game, I'm making that more attractive for other people as well. So it's not like it's strictly better to do that all the time. In a solo game, probably, but the AI can end up taking it too, and then they can have something better than I can. All right, so... I am done with all that, so I do draw up to my hand size. Now again, if my hand size was just five, I would not draw any more cards. But because my hand size is six, because of Quinn over here, passive, increase your hand size by one, I'm gonna reshuffle, which again, adds this top card in. Oops, guess it wanted me to do, oh, that's another land type, well. All right, so I got a lot of these yellow cards in my hand anyway. <laughs> so uh, I'm at five cards, so I draw one more, that's six, all right. So, I am done with my turn. Let's get the AI turn on the way here. Let's get it fired up. All right, so it's blocking its fifth action. Let's do its first action. So it's boats, which again is just a uh, infinite symbol. Discard the top two cards. So discard, discard, uh, do, 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 and gain two of these materials and put this card in your history. Cause it is history, you will never see it again. Boom, bot history. Oh. Well, there you go. It's got an unrest card because you discarded cards. Ah, there we go. We figured it out. You discard cards sometimes. And so, yes, burning an unrest card in there will matter sometimes. Wow, that is a niche thing to happen. But it is it is something that will happen. Gambling, this is a green card. So we look kind of at all the stuff. I feel like this is going to fall into the other category. Um, yeah, because there's nothing really here that they care about. So if able to return one of those uh, <laughs> from your discard. And again, that's the AI doing it. Otherwise, uh, oh, so it says otherwise. So you do that. If you can't, then you do this. But, oh, otherwise you do that. And if you can't do that, otherwise, put this card in your history. So those are all otherwises. So we just need to do this first part, uh, which is return this to there. And then we put that in the bot's discard. Boom. Ah, an Axie Axe. I believe they get one for each. Oh, uh, do do do. If there's one or more in play, gain one per yellow in play. There are yellows in play. Unfortunately, they still have one and I have two now, so they're gonna get three materials. Boom, boom, boom. All right, so now we are to the solstice phase. Oh, well, no, wait a minute. Uh, that one goes to the bot discard, and now we reset the bot track. Do, 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 do. Oh, they just leveled up, whatever you wanna call it, a little bit there. So there is that, and we got, wow, cards on a bunch of these now or victory points on a bunch of these. All right, so the AI is done their turn. Back to me. So solstice phase, I gotta figure out if I wanna discard any of this stuff. Kinda wanna discard unrest, but uh, I mean, this card will get rid of my unrest, so I kinda don't. Uh, this is a free play, so no reason to do that. This, I kinda need to get my third yellow, especially if I have glory, which I do. So that means this card, the one card I did not mention in the list of things I need to do for this turn. So when I discard that, I can either gain a population or uh, gain two brick. I'm gonna gain a population. I could have drawn a card as well, but I already have everything I need in my hand. So first thing I'm gonna do is play this free action. Free action, gain a population. Boom, that's it. Uh, next, I am going to play the druids. So I'll just play them into the discard. Uh, that does take an action to do. Uh, do, 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 do. Now I may have gone through my deck last time, so this probably should have a uh, token on it, but again, it doesn't matter. This is something that often gets forgotten throughout the game, but it doesn't matter. All right, so pay one population to break through for a green or return one and gain a population. So I gain a population 
and I return an unrest. Well, that seems good because I guess those people who are under unrest and revolt, uh, my druids came over and they're like, no, be peaceful, my friends. And they're like, okay. So they got rid of their discontent and they became useful population. So look at that. The Celts with their druidic ways. Uh, so that was one action used so far. I'm going to play another action. Ding, da, ding, da, ding, ding. To play this, you may draw a card from your discard pile. Huh. I don't think I want anything from my discard pile. Druids are pretty good. Syrians. Oh, yes. I will draw that from my discard pile. Yes, thank you very much. So you may draw a card from your discard pile. And then you may garrison a card. Well, I'm not garrisoning a card, but I'm certainly going to play the Assyrians again to gain me another population. Because why wouldn't I do that? Thank you very much. And then for my last action, I'm going down in a blaze of glory. I, I was about to sing another song. That's why the tune changed halfway through. Uh, but uh, glory it is. This card cannot be garrisoned. So again, you can't put it under one of these cards. Uh, you can abandon three cards to look at the top two cards of the victory point display and take one of those cards. All right, so I'm abandoning this, which also abandons all cards under it. So my deck has just gotten a little bit bigger um, with the glory card, but, but I get to look at the top two cards here and pick one of them forever. So this one gives me six victory points, this one nine, so I'm leaning toward nine. This is a free play card. Draw the top card of your deck, if able, and choose to discard it or return it to the top or put it in your history. So this will let me look at a card at the top of my deck. It is a free play. Decide whether I want it or not. If I want it, I put it back on top of my deck for the next turn. If I don't want it, I can discard it. If I never want it again, I could put it in my history, which clears it from my deck. So that's a nice way to deck thin, and it's nine victory points. Let's see what this one is. This is also a free play. If you're in the barbarian phase, which we are now, draw up to four cards. I mean, that's a lot of cards. If you're in the Empire phase, which we will be soon, develop at no cost and put this card into your history. All right, so developing at no cost means I get one of these upgrades at no cost. Even if it's got an X on this pile, it doesn't matter. It tells you to develop whenever something tells you to develop. Now, I can only do that once. So I get one of these cards for free, which is pretty good, uh, which speeds me toward the end of the game too. But then that goes in my history. It's gone forever. Wow, that's a tough choice. Because I'm playing against the AI, I'm going to put this one on top because I don't mind if they get a six victory point card. I'd rather them not get a nine victory point card. And when I acquire that, again, it goes right into my hand. And remember, it is a free play. So why wouldn't I do this? The answer is I would never not do that. So free play, draw the top card of your deck. So let's do that. Top card of your deck. Badink, badink. So I can choose to either put it in my discard get rid of it forever, or put it back on top of my deck. Uh, pay three resources to acquire, one of those or one of those. You know what, I do have some brick. I might want to advance. I'll just put it back on top of my deck. Um, doesn't matter, remember I have a six card hand size because a good old Quinn over here. No, you ain't seen nothing like the mighty Quinn. Come on without. Come all within. No, you ain't seen nothing like the mighty Quinn. I don't know why I didn't notice that the first time he came out. That's on me. That's on me, everybody. All right, so I got to put a victory point on one of these cards up here. Well, I got something that helps me acquire green. So let's see if this is worth it, because if it is, maybe I'll put a second victory point on it. Uh, exhaust to gain an action. Oh, yeah, but this is the stupid one that just, no. Uh, so I can acquire a green or break through for a green and all other players gain a victory point. So I can either choose to acquire myself or break through myself. This is really good for my green strategy. Strategy, quote unquote, which remember, because I'm the Celts, uh, come on without. <laughs> all right, uh, because I'm the Celts, I get one victory point per green card in my deck at the end of the game. I should not be ignoring those green cards. I have been. But I should not be. And again, green are uncivilized cards. Very uncivilized. Silly says, I don't know that song. Oh, look it up. It's a great song. The Mighty Quinn is what it's called, I believe. Don't look it up now. Finish the stream, then look it up. I'll just keep singing it for you throughout. I'm sure I'll keep singing it, not on purpose. Because uh, <laughs> Quinn's up there. All right, so I'm done. 
I am done my turn. I put the victory point up there. So again, let's look at this real quick to remember the order. So then I clear my tokens, then I discard any number of cards and draw up to five. So first thing I do is clear my tokens. And again, that is super important because I do clear the token on top of that, which means I can trigger it again for a second turn in a row. Uh, so then I discard any cards. Well, guess what? I ain't got any cards. So now I drop to six cards. Oops, I only got three. So this one goes in here. Hey, it's an unrest. Uh, that's going to shuffle in. And now I draw three more. And I got to remember to put the X up here, which people always forget to do. And if you don't believe me, watch Collins play through. He forgets to do it all the time too. Uh, but, and again, 99% of the time it doesn't matter. But if I've got such a lean deck and I've got such a card dry deck, the Greeks do this a lot. Um if you got such a lean deck that you could keep drawing through you're not going to get to draw from the deck again and it gets rid of one of your un or your uh exhaust tokens as well so you can't use it um when it's over there but anyway i should be giving them more unrest because i should be getting these green cards i just have not the entire game but that's okay uh Celia laughed. I think at the fact that I said I'm going to be singing it the whole game anyway, because I, I do love that song and uh, <laughs> just having it there, uh, having Quinn in there will definitely do it. Oh, it's a swords. It's swords, but no. Oh, wait, up here. Yes, swords is the first option. So discard the top two cards of the deck. If or you recall one of your buildings, if you are in Empire, they steal a civilization as well. All right, so let's do these in order. So first thing they do is discard two cards from their deck. Then I would recall a yellow. Well, thankfully, I just used my glory, so I don't have to recall. Recall again puts it back in your hand. So basically, waste one of your three actions. Um, do, do, do. So I don't recall. And then if I'm an empire, which I'm not, they would steal a population from me. So don't you Raiden Barbarian Cilias or Scythias or whatever you are, Scythians, try to take my stuff? No way. All right. Uh, and then that goes to their discard. Do, 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 do. And then I think they get one for each yellow, but this is the first time there are no, oh no, they do still have a yellow in play. They got this one. So there is a yellow in play. So they only get one material this time, I believe. Do, 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 one material for each in play. Yep. Come on without, come on within. So nomads, I believe again, nomads is their other. So if able to return one of those from their discard, otherwise if able to acquire a green. So let's first and foremost see if they have any unrest in their discard. No, they don't. So now they're gonna acquire a green. They're gonna do the one worth the most victory. Oh, please, yes, take this. All right, good. They are gonna acquire this one. The reason they picked this one is it's the furthest left one uh, and they're both worth two victory points because the one in the corner and then their one victory point token on top so I believe that is right, because it's other, acquire green, otherwise put a card in your history, meaning get rid of it forever if there weren't any green, but they are going to acquire it. And I right clicked, so it goes to them, not to me. Oh, that's right, the unrest goes and with it as well, so boom. And then they pulled another unrest out, so, oh, but there's still 10 cards in the unrest pile. So we're okay, we're doing okay with unrest now. We don't have to worry about that as a loss condition at this point. So AI is done. We're gonna discard this card. They've used all of their cards. So this one's gonna get a victory point and then they're gonna refill. Boom, come all without, come all. Oh, looks like they just leveled up a little bit. So they got three left. I've got two left. All right, so we're getting through these piles pretty quickly and we're gonna to get to our um, empire phase when we do that. But for now, we are back to the solstice phase. And I only have one card with the solstice ability. Tells me I can discard a card to get some stuff. Basically, do I want to discard a card to get a card? Gain a victory point, each other player abandons one of those and put this into my history. You know, it's not a bad time to play it. Oh, I do have glory. But you know what? I only have two civilizations, but if I draw one, well, it doesn't matter. You know what? I'm discarding glory. Although I have two of the three I need, so maybe not. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna steal stuff. So the question is, do I draw one and hope to get another um, place? Or do I just take a material or a population? I feel like I'm gonna take a material in this situation. 
um, and call it a day. So, and I'm going to do this as my first action. So that was the solstice phase. Now it's back to me. So remember I said you could do three actions and up to five whatever is that's what you're going to do 90% of the time. Yeah. As you've noticed, I haven't done these other options. So don't forget there are two other options though. You can either activate or innovate or revolt. So activate is what we've been doing every turn, which is just spend tokens and keep spending tokens and doing stuff. Innovate would mean you just discard your entire hand. If you're like, I don't want any of this garbage to break through for a card. It's not a bad option if you want some of those purple flag cards early on. Uh, I got a couple of them in my deck now, but if you're digging for something very specific uh, or if you see something very like necessary for that boat card, maybe I should have done that. Um, so again, it's not that I'm the best player in the world and I think these actions are stupid. There's certainly times when you could do it. I probably should have done it for that boat card. And remember, when you break through, you just don't get the unrest card. You still get the victory points and the card itself that you go for. And in that situation, so that would be your whole turn. You would just discard your hand. You'd break through to get one card um, and that would be it. You'd redraw your hand. The revolt is if you get a bunch of unrest cards in your hand at a time, you could just trash all of them basically. Um, but that's your whole turn. You don't get to do anything else. So innovate and revolt are good actions, good options, but not something you're gonna use every time. So getting back to my turn, I am spending my first action to play um, this card over here. So first things first, I gain a victory point or a progress token, whatever it's called. Uh, each other player abandons one of these. So they're gonna take this, boop, sorry, gone. Uh, and put this card into your history. So again, it goes below my civilization and this just thins my deck. That's, my deck is now one card thinner for the rest of the game. Um, so let's just make sure we got it right. Cause it said to, to say to recall, no, it said to abandon it. Abandons to discard, recalls to your hand. And that's why I say that that is um, the hardest part for me of this game is those keywords when you first see it, it's overwhelming. Um, at this point, it doesn't bother me at all. All right, this advanced card, I mean, I should do it at some point, right? Actually, it's not a bad time. All right, and didn't I say I wanted one of these? Although I'm one material short of getting it as a acquire. Free play, choose to draw or put a card from your hand to your disc. Wait, this is for two, exile a card from the market. You No, 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 this is the one. Choose, you can either acquire a green or break through for a green and all other players get a victory point. So you know what? I am gonna do this. For my second action, I am going to advance and I'm going to pay five brick. How do I pay five brick when I only have four, you ask? I'm going to spend one of these victory points for two brick. Three, four, five. So that's five materials right there and I'm going to break through, which basically means I ain't got to worry about that unrest under it. I just get the card and the victory point. So I got that victory point right back anyway. I'm all good. It's all good for me. So that card's gone. And this is in my hand and I could do this right away to acquire another one. Now I don't want to do that because I want to start getting these out. But so that one lets me garrison. This one lets me draw and garrison. I'm going to save the draw for next turn. So I'm going to do this. Do I want to garrison these elders? Do I want to just discard them? I'm going to garrison them for now. Well, it's a good. Oh, oh, oh. And I acquired a green card. Boom. I'm going to give them an unrest. So that goes to the top of their deck. Because whenever I acquire a green card, that happens. But I'm going to put that green card I just acquired in garrison. Remember, when I do glory next turn, hopefully, uh, it, it won't matter anyway. So that was my third action. So I advanced. I... What was my other action? Is that only two actions? I can't be right. I definitely feel like I did a third action. Played this card. Didn't do a cattle raid though. Huh, maybe I only did two actions. I did this one and I put this into play. Did I put one of these other cards into play? I certainly did not. So maybe I, huh. You know what? I'm pretty sure somebody can rewind and tell me if I'm cheating, but that'll be my third action. Uh, so I had one, two, three, four, so my hand was all these cards at the beginning of the turn. One, two, three, four, five. Where's my sixth card? 
I feel like I played a card and put it in the wrong spot here. Somebody, huh. Because I definitely didn't do this cattle raid. I discarded this cattle raid to do something. Oh, hold on. All right, so my hand was one, two, three, four, five. Where is my sixth card? I didn't play either of these this turn. I feel like I did something with the sixth card and it's gone now and I don't know what I did with it. Because this card was up here with a victory point on it. So I definitely discarded this. Oh, I played a card that I played to my discard pile. That's right, okay. So I trashed the card, I put it in my history. Always trust your tokens. I had two up here. This was my third token, was to play this. I got this green card. Okay, we're good. We're good. All right, because remember, I played that card to my history um, as well as my other. So this advance, I had played to get the green card. Uh, the green card's now under this territory. These are two are in my hand at the end of the turn. Uh, so again, I would normally put a victory point up first. I'm just going to do it in this order because it's easier because I'm here. I'm not going to discard any cards. I'm not going to draw my cards, though, because that might affect where I'd put my victory point. What is this one? Now, it can only be played until I get to Empire phase, which is something to consider because there's only three more cards, to, well, of these to go through. I got seven in my deck and two here, so it's not like it's going to be instantly, but this card is not useful forever, but it's a free play. Oh, it's worth victory points. Oh, a victory point per one of those, and I've already got one, so it's already worth one victory point. Free play. Draw two cards and discard one of them. I mean, that's not terrible. I'll put a victory point on that, because I don't want them to clear it, because that's the other thing. When they clear the market, they'll never clear something with a token on it, so that is the only choice they have right now, so we don't want them doing that. All right, so now I'm going to draw back up to six cards, so I'm drawing four. Come on. There you go. There's another one. All right, so my next turn's pretty easy. I'm going to play one territory, two territories, then glory again. Uh, I do have an unrest. I do have this conquered. I do have this. Well, Assyrians will definitely get played because it's a free play. So why wouldn't I do it? Uh, from your discard pile on top of your deck also. So I could do that. All right. So anyway, that is my turn. I am done. Let's get ready for the AI turn. Oh, they do all five of their actions. All right. Let's start doing it. All right, so there's an ax for each yellow card in play. I guess it's good I didn't play a second yellow card. They are gonna get a brick. But Ink, how do I know that? Because we've done it a million times already. <laughs> this one's an unrest, it goes here. So actually the game speeds up as it goes along. Mysticism, uh, it's got an infinite card on it. So we haven't done an infinite in a while. What was that one? Uh, so discard the top two cards from your deck. Uh, but Ink, but Ink. Uh, and then gain two brick. But ink, but ink. She's a brick house. She's mighty, mighty going into the bot history. So, again, for the history, what's the difference between discard and history? Discard, you're going to keep seeing it each round. History, it's under their deck. You'll never see it again. It's still worth victory points, all that. It just basically gets rid of it so they don't have to keep drawing it. Uh, ah, so this is a yellow one. It's just going to go and play, I'm pretty sure. Gain up population. Uh, and do that and exile a card. So they gain a population. They put this in play. Do do do. So that is their first, or that is their only yellow in play now because I trashed it a second ago. Ha ha ha. But they did get a population. When they gain, conquered that territory, they got a population. And then they trash a card from the market. This keeps the market nice and thin, but they've all got tokens on them so they don't trash nothing. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing gotta do something all right so this is an other uh so if able to return a fire card from your discard otherwise acquire a green card all right so let's see if they've got a unrest card i don't think they do oh they did boom wow all right so that's all they do then return that unrest card and boom discard done ai turn done second drama card yeah no they're down to two. I'm down to two. It's coming down to the wire. <laughs> I got three cards. They only have four. Whoa. All right. Well, and I'm about to get a ton of cards back in my deck uh, when I'm about to do this. So free play. I'm going to do this. Oh, wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't forget to do something first. All right. 
so I could conquer. I like that conquer card. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to discard this on rest card. Because this doesn't say you can't discard it or anything else. So you can treat it like any other card. During my solstice. And I'm going to get a brick. Because I don't really have much brick right now. Or material or whatever you want to call it. So that was my solstice phase there. Now I'm going to play this. This just says you can garrison a card. I'm not going to do that. This also says you may place a card of your choice from your discard pile on top of your deck. Ooh. Oh, so I'm going to have done this first. But ink to gain a free population. And then I'm going to place this card on top of my deck. So if I had done that first, then I can do this. Uh, and then I can garrison a card. Not going to worry about it. Oh, by the way, I guess I should mark actions. So that's one action. That's two action. Remember, this card is a free action. So I don't got to worry about it. And my third action, it's almost like I would planned this from the beginning, is glory. I'm on the edge of glory. This card cannot be garrisoned. Abandon three to look at the top two cards of the deck and take one of those cards. So we abandon all these cards and everything under them, put them all in our discard, and we get one of these top two cards. All right, so six victory points. So again, we could drop to four cards or develop at no cost, which is pretty good. Cannot be played. It cannot be garrisoned for 11 victory points. Triumphant. Yeah, that's what's happening. So this one is in my hand right now. Now, it, what it doesn't say, if you'll notice, is it doesn't say anything about being put in your history. So you can still put it in your history if you have a way to do so. But right now, I don't, I don't think I want to conquer. Actually, I do. I want to keep this conquer out. Are there any blue cards up here? No, but I can break through. Can I break through with this? Yes, if I have three population, which I have way more than three. I'm going to keep this conquer because I definitely want to uh, dig through here and get some more people like the mighty Quinn over here. All right, so I'm going to recall my tokens. Now I'm going to draw up to my hand size of six. So thankfully it's six, not five, because I do get to quote unquote level up into that. Ooh, there's another conquer card. Come on without, come on within. No, I don't want triumphant in my stupid hand. Uh, garrison a card, top card of your deck. Draw the top card of your deck if able and choose. Yeah, that's that. That's a free play. Ah, <sighs> well, maybe I can get one of these cards that will let me put a card in my history because I don't want to keep drawing this triumphant. It's a dead card in my hand, but there are definitely ways to call cards and I will look for them in a minute. But my turn is officially done. Oh, I did not put a victory point on one of these cards. I was gonna put it on the one. No, which one was I gonna do? Free play, choose and draw a card or put a card from your hand in a discard pile into your history. Boom, there you go, that one. That lets me call. That is my only objective next turn. I got to find a way to get that green card into my hand, even if it's take a, card, a turn to just trash everything and just draw that card. That is my objective next turn. All right, so we are going to do the AI turn, though. All right, don't take that card. Don't take that card. Don't take that card. Conquer. Oh, that's the one with the uh, yellow cards in play. There's only one, so they're going to get one. Come on without. Come on with it. Oh, this one's a sword, though. That's not a conquer. Discard the top two cards of their deck. One, two. Uh, if I have one, they recall it. I don't. Uh, and if they're in that, they steal one of those. Or if I'm in that, they steal one. I am not. So, discard. Nomads is a nothing card. So, it is other up here. Return one of those. If not, acquire green. No. No, no. No, 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 no. Please have an unrest in here. No, no. And I'm the one who put a victory point on there for them to make it their priority. I can't believe I did that. No, I know they have other cards in their deck. What were you thinking, Peter? Oh, this is a star. All right, so this is worth five victory points to them. <coughs> That's just an AI thing, uh, if you look at it. Uh, just to make things simpler at the end of the game scoring oh did I not do an end of the game scoring uh, 
did I really not do an end of the game scoring for them? Well, anyway, we could look in the AI book. Let's just, let me just double check that. But I am pretty sure they prioritize those. Uh, yeah, the star are worth five victory points for them at the end of the game. So they prioritize them as if it is five victory points. I got lucky. My stupidity did not come back to bite me. Um, all right. So, because they are looking for a green card. And what are they going to do for it? They are going to acquire it. So they do get the unrest with it. But they also get the victory point. But that's five, six victory points compared to one, two, three victory points. So they are definitely going for this one. So they are acquiring it. Oops. I put it in mine, so that was stupid. I lose one there, I gain one there, and then this goes on top of their deck. The unrest goes on top of that, and don't be an idiot and take it yourself. So to the bot's discard, their last card is an unrest. That goes away. All right, let's fill them up, 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 fill them up, up, up. Oh, their draw deck's empty, but they don't get to advance. Not that that much matters. Uh, wow, that was a close one, says Silly. Yeah, you are darn tootin' that was a close one. All right, so I got a discard. I definitely like this card. I'm going to try to play this also. Uh, I'm going to play this for a free population. Uh, free play, draw the top card of your deck. I got nothing here to let me... Ooh, here we go. Here we go. All right, Druids. Pay one to break through for a, oh, Druids. I love my Druids. So either gain a victory point or pay one to break through for a green or return a red. Okay, so we know what we're doing here. First things first, let's play this. It's a free play uh, to get our population up one. Why not? Then we are going to Druids. That does cost an action. But ink dink. Oh, this should have an X on it because I did draw one from there last turn. Again, people always forget that. Uh, so I pay one to acquire a, or no, break through even for a green card, which is even better. Now, I guess I should double check this just to make sure. Soltis, you may discard a card. So that's similar to the city I already have. But this one, free play, choose to draw. I mean, yeah, yeah. So I'm breaking through for that. Oh, and I got a green card. So whenever I get a green or uncivilized card, they take an unrest. Ha <laughs> ha. Suckers. All right. So that was a, uh, I exhausted that for that. Uh, and I've taken one action, which was my druid's action. Oh, I forgot to discard a card to do something, uh, to get a population or a whatever. That's okay. I didn't do it during my solstice phase. I'm not going to skip ahead and do it. So I think my second one is going to be this leadership. Oh, well, sure. Because it's not even action. It's a free play. Choose, draw a card, or put a card from your hand or discard pile into your history. Yes, please. I want to put this 11 victory point card. It says can't be played, can't be garrisoned, doesn't say anything about can't be historyed in my history. I still get those 11 points, but I don't got to draw that crappy card every turn. And that's a free play card? Are you kidding me? So good. Uh, all right. So I'm going to do this. Draw the top card of your deck, if able, because this is another free play. Uh, and choose, discard it, or return it to the top, or put it into your history. All right, so let's see what this is. Uh, I'm going to keep it on top, because I have another uh, place out here I'm going to be putting out. I have only taken one action here. So, all right, second action, we'll go ahead and put this yellow place out. You may draw a card from your discard pile, uh, or you may garrison a card. Ooh. Uh, and not or, and then you may garrison a card. So I can draw a card. I can draw this free play, which will let me draw a card, but I don't really want to draw a card. I'm going to free pay. I'm going to pull this card. You may draw a card from your discard pile. See, this card is so good. I need something that works with this and brings it back to my hand so I can keep playing this and keep drawing cards and keep getting free population. And, oh, just seems good. I mean, not that population is the end all be all, but it certainly helps you get rid of unrest. One population in action will get rid of an unrest card. So that's not bad. Pay one population. It's pretty good to have uh, extra people sitting around. All right. So, and I'm going to do three here for this card now because I do have so much population. One, two, three. Uh, oh, and that is an action. So that'll be my oopsies. That'll be my third action. Um, and we are breaking through for either yellow or a 
flag card. Well, I got so many yellow cards, I don't need it. So I'm going to start searching this deck for a flag card. So it'll be the first one I run into. Do, do, oh, there it is. So you do discard again normally until you draw one, but that takes too much time. Ooh, unfortunately, this has got a uh, an axe on it, which isn't great. So that means I can only play it for a limited time because we are getting near the end of our deck here. Uh, I mean, I've got some time because my deck's getting pretty thick. All right, free play. Place a card on top of your deck and gain two victory points. Uh, Place a card. Oh, I assume that's got to be from my hand. It doesn't say from your discard pile, so I assume it's from my hand. Uh, Minonans. I'm going to just hold on to that because, I again, I assume it's got to be from my hand. But on top of your deck, which does slow you down, but it also gives you two victory points, which is pretty good. And then you get a victory point per four victory points. Uh, again, they're called progress, really. <clears throat> but two progress for that? Yes, please. All right. Let's recall our cards. I do have one in my hand, so I'm only going to draw five. And again, I have a six-card hand because of the mighty Quinn. Come on without. Come on within. No, you ain't seen nothing like the mighty Quinn. Now, I don't have any. I do have Conquer again, so I could get another one of those purple cards. I love purple cards, as you can tell. They're usually free actions. They're so stinking good. Uh, and yeah, I got three more populations, so I could just break through for another one. Seems good. Uh, and then I could put out those two territories, or I could steal some cattle, or I could conquer some... Well, conquer is what we do. Uh, yeah, so I can even put some stuff on top of my deck, too, with this card, uh, which will help me because I know I can't play it this turn, and it'll let me get it for the next turn. So anything I don't want to play this turn, I can always do that with. Um, so that's pretty cool as a free action. All right, so that is the end of my turn. I do have to put a victory on one of these. So let's see, I do want green things, right? We know cities are good. This is agriculture. Uh, exhaust, treat one of those as three bags for the rest of the turn. Now, what does that mean? Absolutely nothing to me right now. Um, this card does let me cycle through my deck faster and that's something to start considering because the faster you get through your deck, the faster you can get to these cards and start buying them. So I keep getting resources when I discard a card at the beginning of my turn. But don't forget, one of the options here, the last one, is draw a card. So I could just discard cards to draw cards to get through my deck faster. Having a second one of those is not the worst thing in the world. Now this one's worth victory points equal to the number of... Um, wheat I have and it doesn't give a specific location so I assume that doesn't have to be on the board um, and I do have places with wheat in them although only one eh, that's not really good enough for me um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for this one so I'm gonna put a victory point on it so that way when I take it I get victory points as well all right so let's roll the AI dice and see what they decide to do six son of a gun all right now they haven't advanced to their made their their end state yet, have they? No. All right. So they're gonna look at yellow. There's one, two out, so they're gonna get two of these. Man, they got a lot of bricks. Just saying, a lot of bricks. Unrest goes away. This one is that. They're gonna get. Oops. So that goes to their discard. They're getting two more bricks. <laughs> a lot of bricks. They're fighty. They're fighty fellows. They are. Those uh, Scythians. All right, so this one is, oh wait, is that a yellow building? Oh, it is yellow, so it just goes into play and they gain a population. How do I remember that? I just do. Let's double check my things here, but uh, exile a card from the market also. Ah, so they are gonna get rid of one and this time they will exile because this one doesn't have any victory points on it. Ooh, one of these cannot be played. Return up to two unrest before scoring. So this is just an end game, return up to two unrest, can't be played, so it's kind of a waste. Although, again, I can discard cards, and I'm working on getting more cities to discard more cards. So it's not totally a dead card for me, but, I mean, clearly there's better stuff. And they get two more. Wow. They got a lot of a lot of bricks over there. Them, uh, them friendly Scythians with all them bricks and stuff. All right. So on my turn, free play, place a card on top of your deck to get two. Again, it's a free play, so it feels like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. 
First things first. So I'm going to play this this turn. I kind of want to play this. I get a green card. I can get that city. Uh, that seems pretty good. This will let me steal stuff, which I don't really care about. All right. You know what? I'm going to put, I'm going to discard this. And do I draw cards or do I get resources? I feel like I still get resources because I'm using resources, not for this one per se, but for this one for sure. All right. So I'm going to get another population because I might be spending three here in a second. And I think I have two of those conquer cards. All right. So I do still have three actions. So I'm going to play this first. Now, again, I can only play this when I'm a barbarian. The minute I switch to an empire, this card is no longer useless. Free play. Place a card on top of your deck and gain two. Well, we said I am not going to play. I want to play the elders this turn, so I'm not going to play this one this turn because it'll let me search, and I don't know that I care that much about this flag card. I mean, it's worth three at the end of the game, but and it lets me return two unrest, but I'm not really planning on having unrest. I got plenty of ways of getting rid of it, it feels like. So we'll see. We'll see what happens there. So I put that on top of my deck, which gives me two victory points. All right, so I got these three cards, all of which are going to get played. Oh, I could draw a card. So let's go ahead and do this one first. So that's an action. By the way, those others, free actions. So this is one of those games that really accelerates as it goes along. Oh, I knew what that was. Um, well, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I'll draw it. Fine. Uh, I'm not going to garrison a card. I'm going to play this one as well. And again, for my third action, I am going to play the Elders. And I'm going to... I said I don't care about those um, Unrest cards, but I don't necessarily want one in my hand right now either. So I am going to uh, break through to get it. And I'm going to give them a victory point. So they get a victory point, but I get to break through meaning I don't get the unrest card. Come on without... Oh, that was a city. Now they get a town there. Uh, all right. Well, anyway. But I've got all three out, so hopefully I get my... I'm on the edge of glory. If not, I got these two cards to play next turn. Oh, but if I discard one... So here's the thing, if I discard one of these, I will draw and get this into my deck and accelerate myself toward the end of the game. I mean, it's not really the end of the game. Again, this is one goal, but these are toward my victory point cards. So I feel like I should do that. At this point, I have more population. I mean, getting this out of my deck permanently is pretty good, but oh, when I did that, boom, by the way, oops, do not discard. Instead, give them an unrest card, sorry. I hit discard button, but really, remember, anytime I acquire a green card, uh, they I get I have to exhaust this, but they get a unrest card, which seems good. All right, um, so I am done my card or my turn. So now I'm going to draw four cards. Deck is empty, so this is the last one before I get my Celtic gold and another location card. I'm going to have to start putting some of those in my. Uh, <laughs> my thing here oh don't forget to put an oh oh oh, oh. Wait, wait. so recall the tokens first then we do this part and i should have put a victory point up first too so don't look at my cards nobody look at my cards which of these seems the best so sumerians i mean giving that an extra victory point isn't bad exhaust all players may gain two break solstice you may gain two victory points if you do choose abandon this card or put it into your history abandon just means discard it so I get two victory points, but I can only play it during the Barbarian phase, which I'm almost out of. But after I'm done Barbarian phase, I can put it into my history. Maybe. Yeah, it feels like it's just going to clog up my hand. So maybe I don't want that. Does this have two progress on it? Man. Gain two bricks. Uh, What's this one? Because I'm almost to the Empire phase now, so I'm thinking about these. All players gain two brick. Give each other player a card from your hand or discard pile. Oh, so I could give them, like if I get unrest, that's a way to give it to them. Eh, I don't care. Gain three, exile card. Uh, I'm going to put a victory point on this. Like I said, I don't love this card, but I like it a lot more at four victory points. And get rid of two unrest, not having to think about them at the end of the game. That's not the worst thing ever. All right, so... 
that was that. Now I drew my hand up. I do have all six cards. And so it, that is the end of my turn. Let's go. Oops. I never refilled the AI. Not that it matters because <laughs> it literally has zero effect on my turn. Uh, but I forgot to refill it. This was on six. If it hadn't been on six, one of these might have had a victory point card, but it's fine. All right. Now come on with that six again. All right. Unrest. Well, there you go. That's kind of a dead card. Ooh, double unrest. Nomads. That is, I think, uh, yeah, return one to your hand. Otherwise, they acquire a green card. So they definitely don't have anything in their discard. So they're going to acquire a green card. And there's only one of them on the table. So I right click it and they get it. All right. Let's see what their next card is. It is a green one. It is gambling. But I think that is, again, a bottom card. Uh, do, 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 do. So, again, they're going to acquire a green card. I don't think this... Yeah, there's nothing else on this. So, yep. Again, they're going to acquire a card. Oh, no. That's not green. So, they don't have the option to acquire a green. This green is empty. So, when this happens... Ah, we didn't get into this at the beginning. So, when this deck empties, they now start drawing to fill in these spots from the main deck. So, now there are no more green options or uncivilized options available. Now, that doesn't mean there are none in the deck still. There certainly can be some in the deck. So if there are some in the deck, then they would just draw that. Um, all right, so, uh, do, 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 do. so if able to acquire that, otherwise put this card into the history. Well, I already discarded it for them, so we're not gonna do that. We're gonna put it back and put it in their history. Unraveling the mystery, it all started with a big bang. Bang! All right. All right, this has got an infinite symbol on the top and it is not a yellow card. So let's see, infinite symbol means discard two cards, badink, badink, gain two brick, badink, badink. Holy moly, they got a lot of brick. Uh, and put this card into their history. Mad science history, unraveling the mysteries, it all started with a big bang. Bang! All right. So, solstice phase, I get to discard. Did, 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 did it. Did, 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 did it. I got a glory, which I like. This lets me get a green, which I also like. So, I don't want to draw cards. Because if I do, well, this exhaust token's here. It, oh, I'm sorry. Never mind. Why is this like this? Did I forget to reshuffle? Something's wrong here. Why did those face down? There's zero chance those should be face down. I'm pretty sure, yeah, I just got the last thing from there. So, yeah, these should be reshuffled. That was in the wrong spot. I Oh, I shuffled it myself and put it here. That's what happened. All right. Uh, do, 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 do. So drawing cards is not a problem, which is, I think, what I want to do. That lets me get a purple. That gives me another thing down that I don't care. Well, yeah. So let's discard the unrest, unless this gets rid of an unrest. Do any of these kill an unrest? They do not. And remember, if I get this purple card, I can just ignore two unrest at the end of the game. So I'm going to do that to draw another card, though. Wow. All right. So I got some options here. So I might want to garrison with some of these because I don't have to pull all of them with the glory. I'm only going to have to get rid of three. So maybe the right move here is to start garrisoning some because I don't need like this advance, for example, when I got elders here, which is just straight up better. Um, I do have three though, so I'm going to do this first. So my first action, I'm going to do this. I am going to conquer uh, so I'm going to pay three people to break through for a yellow or a purple. And I'm just going to break through for this purple. But ink. And ooh, it says it can't be played, but it says nothing about being garrisoned. So that one lets me garrison. This one lets me place a card of your choice from your discard pile on top of your deck. I don't think I have any great cards in my discard right now, so I'm not going to do that. So I'm actually going to play this as my second action. But ink. And I'm going to put these Sumerians that can't be played under there. I mean, they're just victory points at the end of the game. Why wouldn't I? And it lets me ignore two unrest. So I'm just going to keep this over here. It's still in the game, but I'm not planning on glorifying it 
in a second here, which is the next thing I'm doing though. So I play my glory card to badink, 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 get rid of these three and go fishing for VPs. Whoop, whoop. What is going on here? Did I not grab two? I guess not. Ooh, another 11 victory pointer or this one. You know, this card just keeps getting <laughs> spit out over and over again. I feel a little bad for it, but not that bad. All right, so that was all three of my actions. Uh, I think I'm just discarding all this stuff. I know I'm not getting to the end of my deck this turn, but it'll get me closer. Although maybe I keep this one just so I can play a card. You place a card of your choice on the top of your deck. I mean, acquiring green cards is good because they, of course, help me with my victor points up to a maximum of 10, but still 10 victor points is good. Uh, and they let me burn down their stuff, which always makes me happy. But I'm just gonna discard these three and I'm gonna draw five more. Oh, well, don't draw cards yet. Ah, victory points first. Take your tokens back second. Gosh, what are you doing? All out of order. All right, so I always do that, by the way. Uh, victory points. All right, so let's see. Ooh, port. I like ports. Exhaust to gain one of those per water in play area. You may pay three bricks to draw a card of your choice from your discard pile. You know what? That's decent. I wouldn't be sad to lose it, but it's pretty decent. Um, if I've got water, which I thought I did on some of these cards. Well, not this one, but it's fine. All right. So, AI turn. We want to roll it, roll it. We want to roll it, roll it. All right, so they've got an ax and my ax. Ah, so thankfully I cleared all those yellow buildings, although they have two themselves. I have one, so that's a total of three yellow buildings. So they are gonna get three of those building materials and then they're gonna discard it. We don't do the two. We're going right to the three. It's another one. They're going to get three more building materials. One, two, three. These people are like definitely all about the building materials. Ah, they are raiders now, though. Discard up to two cards from their deck. Badink, badink. Was there not a second card to discard? Uh, hold on. So I did discard one, now we discard another. So I think I'm gonna have to do this for them. They definitely level that up, shuffle up, and now they're gonna discard. All right, so that was their second discard. So that was two. I'm on the edge of glory. And then I recall one of my yellow buildings, which unfortunately, Recalls a card under it as well. No, that's all right. I can just put it back down, right? It's only one action. It's fine. It's fine. And if I was uh, blue, they'd uh, an empire. They'd steal one of my population. But I am not. I am not quite an empire. And then, oh, they just hurt themselves. They only get two now because they recalled one of my yellow buildings. All right, so now I do get to discard something. Do I discard? No, because I want to bury some of this stuff. Uh, so I want to discard something bad, but not total trash. That's a free play, so we're not going to do that. That card's always good. City, I kind of want to get in play. That's a free play. That's another civilization, so you know what? It is going to be this that I discard, and I'm going to use it to... I need a population. Need more peoples. All right, free play. Choose to uh, draw a card or put a card from your hand or discard pile into your history. Yes, please. All right, so that is a free play. Let's search. And I know I got that 11 glory card. Yep, that's going right to my history. Yes, please. Free play, so good. So good, by the way. Free play, place a card on top of your deck to gain two glory points. Again, it slows me down, but I'm in no rush to do that, right? Two glory points, yes please. Free play, double yes please. Uh, druids, I mean, I gotta do the 
the the thing with the thing, right? I feel like I got to play. All right, I think I want to play my city too. Yeah, so that way I have a second city to play. So let's do that. That gives me two solstice actions of discarding to get through my deck faster. That's one play. Kind of feel like the druids is my other play. So do do do. Let's see what they do. So I'm gonna pay a population to break through for a green card. So I think there was one on the table. There is. There's that port. So I'm gonna break through for it. Uh, and the reason the unrest went away there is because it's remember a territory. Those yellow cards never come in with um, unrest under them. So you don't get unrest for getting new territory. In fact, they love it. They love that. Uh, so do I put a yellow card in or do I put this card in? This is a card I can exhaust to gain a red or to gain a brick per yellow in my play area. And then I can always pay three to draw a card of your choice from your discard pile. Huh. I don't have three. I could pay a victory point in two, which seems not like the worst thing in the world. So I'm going to go ahead and play this with my last action counter. Do I just pay three now? I mean, that seems real good. Don't I have a free play card? Because actually, yeah, because I'm about to go through all this stuff. Yeah, that's a pretty good free play. Your hand or your discard pile into your history. Yeah, all right. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to exhaust this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, I acquired a green, by the way. So um, <laughs> take a burn. Burn, baby, burn. Disco Inferno. Because uh, I did buy a green or breakthrough for a green. Uh, do, do, do. So yeah, I'm going to do that. Played that port as my third action. But even though I'm done with my three actions, I can still do free actions. So I did it to draw this. I'm going to play this. Let me look in here because there's got to be a worse card in here. Yeah, there's, isn't there the one that like literally says you can't play or do anything with it? Yeah. So I'm going to get rid of this and put this in my um, my history. Which seems better than not good. All right, so I'm gonna need to start getting resources here. I know I'm talking about like discarding cards to go through my deck, but at some point I'm gonna have to start stop spending them and start saving them because these are gonna all be worth victory points. This is one per green. At the end, four victory points, four victory points, four victory points, four victory points. I mean, these are some decent decent cards here and if i go through this deck that also ends the game so if i go through either that deck or this deck it gets us to the end of the game by the way this is a solstice card so actually technically when it's my turn then their turn then we do solstice my turn their turn solstice so that just reminds you where the solstice is oops i did not refill their slots again not that it affects me not even a little bit except it did put a Victory point on that, which actually would have been mine, because uh, I did take the card that was in this spot. So, yes, I did mess that up, and I'm still taking my victory point, though, because uh, that it was in the two spot that I took that green card from. So, yes, please, I will take an extra victory point. Thank you very much. I think I'm going to discard these, and I get I don't have to discard both of them. But I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm really trying to get through my deck. So I'm gonna be an empire in two seconds when this comes up. Um, so let's go ahead. It's the end of my turn. I don't do that yet though. I can recall my tokens. What's my other thing I get to do? Uh, draw my hand up and I don't even remember. Oh, did I do this? Exhaust and pay three to draw a card of your choice. Ah, so I had to do that part of it. So I did have to exhaust this. Oh, wait, I did do that. And I paid three. No, I didn't. I didn't pay the three. So that's one, two, three. Because remember, victory points can be traded in for two brick. So sorry, I forgot to do that part. So I would have had to exhaust this card because I did draw that card, remember, and play it to draw to uh, archive another card. So when I, I drew it and played it, I just forgot to pay for it. So I pay it by exhausting this. And I paid three brick, which again, one victory point is two brick, and then one brick to pay for that. Um, and you don't have to do everything. So I get one per water drop on my thing. I have no water drops on anything in play right now. 
um, and then draw a card of your choice from your discard pile if you pay three, which I did do. All right, then at the end of the round, we put a victory point up here, which I'm going to do. Which card? Do I care about any of these cards? Well, I kind of want water drop spaces now. This one's got a water drop on it and it's got quite a few victory points. Let's give it another one and pray. <laughs> and worst case scenario, I don't get it. I mean, that's okay. These cards are worth victory points too. This is worth two. This is worth one per 10 cards in my deck. And that's deck, discard pile, whatever. So that's not the worst thing. The only thing that doesn't count for those, oops, not Quinn, is uh, these cards. So if you have not yet bought the upgrades, they don't count as being in your uh, deck or whatever, but no, that's fine. All right, so I'm drawing four cards. Putting this card in my discard, which does exhaust this pile, not this pile, so I can still go to this pile uh, in a second. Then we're gonna reshuffle those. I'm gonna draw two more cards. And that is that. So again, this pile is exhausted right now, even though there's nothing in it anymore. Um, but it does get rid of this exhaust token. So example, I can't use it to exhaust other things. Uh, and I got my six card hand and I'm done. All right, so let's go ahead and do the AI turn. Come all without, come all within. No, you ain't seen nothing. All right, so they are about to go up to, they only have three cards, so yes. At the end of this round, they are gonna be an empire as well. So we're gonna stop using this one chart that we've been using this whole game. We're gonna start using the other one. All right, so that's got a warrior symbol, which means we are looking for yellow. And there are two yellow, he's got them, and so he gets two brick. Moves along. Unrest goes away. Nomads does the bottom thing. So if there's an unrest in their discard pile, you get that, get rid of that. Do, 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 do. There is not. So instead of getting rid of that, they go for a green card, which there are no uncivilized card, I should say. Uh, so again, if able, discard one of those. If not, acquire one of those. Otherwise, put this card into your history. So they are thinning their deck out, just like we do. And there's another unrest. Go on without 13 cards in the unrest pile. So again, unrest gets added throughout the game. It's one of the neater mechanics in the game um, that really I didn't appreciate when I first played because you can actually rush unrest early and really the game could end very quickly. Now again, whoever has the most unrest just loses and whoever has the least wins in that situation so rushing to give yourself unrest isn't good but giving it to other people isn't bad but unrest gets introduced throughout the game not only do you have some in your hand at the beginning of the game and deck but it's also in this other like upgrade deck you get more unrest as the game goes on so it does scale by player count also um when you're building this on unrest deck not only do players have cards with unrest in them, but there are three and four player cards that add unrest to the game as well. So it's really clever. It's really smart. I actually think there are quite a few smart things about it. Like I said, the hardest thing, the hardest thing is these keywords. And as you've seen, I've mostly got them now, uh, but you do need to player aid with them. They are in the rule book. They are in the regular rule book, but they're kind of in, not, they're not in a weird place, right? But like, there, there's a lot of keywords in here, and I don't think all of them are that important to know. I think a lot of them are pretty easy, but um, but the nice part is they do have quite a few keywords if you need them. Um, and we'll talk about some other things about the solo rule book at the end. There, there's some nifty stuff. I'm starting to get into final thoughts here, and we're not even done. So let's finish out the game first. Uh, so they are done their turn, so let's refill the slots, and we're going to see, do they automatically flip their card? They did. So they are now an empire, just like we are. All right, so that is the end of the game. They had a four, so this four card got one, got a victory point on it, and back to our turn. All right, so I got two cities now, so I can do this twice. I kind of want to get through my deck, but I also need resources. Let's see if any of these cards seem super good for what I'm doing. You can acquire one of those cards, put this card in your history. Uh, so it costs four, it's a one-time use, but you do get a victory point per one of those. It's pretty ridiculous. So I kind of have to get that at some point. So I do need to focus a little bit on bricks. This is two and two. Passive, increase your hand size by one, very nice. Exhaust it, you may put a card from your hand into your history. You may put a card from your discard pile into your history. Whoa, this is really thin in your deck. I really like that card, holy cow, that's two and two. All right, and four victory points, whoa. 
All right, you may acquire a green or a um, pillar. Each other player takes an unrest. Okay, that's just nasty. Passive, when you play a sword card, gain a victory point. All right, I'm gonna go for this card first and I think I'm going for this one second. Um, this is so good, so good, holy cow. I've not played with this civilization before, and that's one of the cool things. I'll reset the mod for you at the end here and kind of show you how many options there are in this game. And it's like 40 bucks. I saw it on Amazon today, so it's, it is available, the basic game. There are a couple misprinted cards, and there's some misprints in the rule book. That's why they got this errata thing here. But that's not a big deal. Like, there is... Uh, oh, by the way, we are no longer using this chart. We are now, because they are an empire using this chart so let's go ahead and get our zoom on for that chart all right so i do want to discard two cards and again i can't play anything with an axe on it right now just as a reminder i cannot play anything with an axe on it so i'm going to go ahead and discard this axe and i'm going to discard this axe because oops when that went away i became an empire so i can no longer play those cards i can now play Empire cards, which I couldn't before. So I'm going to discard those two and get one of each resource. Because again, uh, that was my goal. Now. I got two free play cards. And a card I can't play. <laughs> so there's that. So I could discard my whole hand. Alright, free play. Draw the top card of your deck, if able, and choose. To discard it, return it to the top, or put it on your history. Gain a population. You may draw a card, you may garrison a card. Okay, so we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this, play this as an action. And I'm just gonna have to pass some of these actions, I think, to draw a card. Ooh. Oh, maybe I don't have to pass some of those actions. All right, so that worked out. Uh, let's go ahead and play this one. Uh, oh, that does let me garrison a card. Let's go ahead and garrison this. Uh, Cause I can't play this conquer card anymore. Again, because I am an empire now, and that had a barbarian on it. I no longer do barbarian-esque things. I only do empire-type things. Uh, all right, so that was that. So that is my second action, right? Oh, no, this is my first action. So my second action will be to play my druids, because that was a free action. Uh, well, before I play my druids, hold on. I'm going to do this other free action. Draw the top card of your deck, if able, choose to discard it, return it to the top of your deck, or put it in your history. Come on, be something useless. Totally useless. Yes, it is. Another red card. Barbarian card. Useless. Gone. To my history. So, again, the history of my people is kept down here, but it doesn't weigh me down in the present, which is freaking fantastic. Like, all right. This game went from something I was meh on the first time I played it to just... that. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. <laughs> All right, so I can either gain a victory point or chronicle or whatever the heck they're called, or I could pay a person to break through for green, which I think I want to do. So, because I'm not going through all these cards, so I don't need the resources to pay for it. Again, I still have to go through my deck to be able to pay for this. So I'm going to go ahead and actually, this is play a card. Oops, no, no, no. that action I already paid for because I remember because I'm going to get a green card and then I'm going to be able to play that green card. So I am going to break through for a green card as well. So it does cost me a green, and that's an uncivilized card, I guess I should say, not a green card. So there's nothing in this deck. So I am now gonna search through this deck for an uncivilized card. And this is technically how you're supposed to do it. Draw cards from until you get an uncivilized card, then you shuffle these back up. So technically, even though I searched through because it's tabletop simulator, that's technically how you're supposed to do it. And I'm gonna have my third city in play because why wouldn't I? I don't think there's a rule against having multiple of one building. And the nice part, don't forget this one here. One victory point per three ongoing cards in play, uh, excluding my yellow cards here. But now I got six cards in play. So that's two victory points for the mighty Quinn. Come on without. Come on within. No, you ain't seen nothing like the mighty Quinn. Oh, don't forget all this stuff I can do here. Why wouldn't I do all that stuff, right? All right. So, uh, exhaust to gain one of those per, uh, which I do have one, actually. So let's go ahead and exhaust it. Oh, and I acquired a green card. 
Yes, I did. I acquired that city card, so they are going to get an unrest. Don't forget that. So now I'm exhausting this. So I get a brick per um per water, and I do have a water here. So I do have a brick, and then I can pay three to draw the card of my choice from my discard. Now again, I want something that's a free action. I mean, do I play this just to get a person? I feel like that's the right call. So play three, one, two, three. Now I'm paying three to get one. Maybe that's not smart, but populations seem to be harder to get than materials. Well, certainly for them <laughs> in, in any case. Uh, do, 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 do. And by the way, I've never done final scoring for them. Um, bot scoring cards under the slots will automatically be scored for the bot. Like I've never done the automatic scoring here, so we'll see what happens. Hopefully it's good. Um, you all are my guinea pigs, just like me. Uh, pay one to gain two people. Oh, I always forgot I could exhaust to do that. I mean, I haven't needed it yet. You may discard a card to gain one or, oh, oh, that's during that phase. And Mighty Quinn. All right, we, we know what we got there. Come on without, come on within. All right, so we're going to recall and we're going to put a victory point token up here. So I'm going to start looking at these because I don't need green anymore. I definitely don't need these yellow buildings. Um, so let's see. All players gain two brick. Give each other player a card from your hand or your discard. And again, I can give them garbage cards. Solstice, choose to gain a person or pay two people to gain a victory point. I mean, that's not the worst thing. Every Solstice I could do that, get a free person. Huh, and it's worth two victory points, but this is worth one for every 10 cards, which I gotta have 20 cards at this point. I'm, I'm, I'm going for this one right now. Two bricks, because I could play this right away to get my two brick. And then, because um, if I need it for the end of next round to buy that card that I'm looking to buy. Now, what's this other one cost? Four brick. So yeah, I'm gonna need brick right now more than I need people, uh, ironically. But again, to pay the cost, I can use victory point tokens. So there is that. All right, let's go ahead and draw our six cards. And I mean, don't forget, I still wanna get three yellow things out here and do glories, which I've got sitting right there. Ah, another card I cannot use. Ah, put a card from your hand or discard pile into your history. Yeah, I really need this history, history in, of history cards. All right, so um, I drew my six cards. Oh, I have an unrest in my hand. Ooh, isn't there a card I could play to like give somebody else a card from my hand? Wasn't that a thing? I thought that was a thing. Give somebody a card from your hand. Ah, there you go. Ah. So this card looks even better now. So I would like to acquire that. Yes, yes, I would. All right, so let's do the AI card. Do, 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 do. Come all within. No, you'll not see nothing like the mighty Quinn. All right, so this changes. So first thing they do is look for glory cards. They don't have it. They look for the glory card, which that is not. Uh, then they look for axes so they look for that before even the infinity symbol down here so if able return and uh whatchamacallit from the discard pile and then put this card into your history so they're just literally clearing these out so they can start going through and again they're get, they got victory point cards here too don't forget so they're they're just really trying to clear stuff out now um and they do not have one in their thing so that's done all right, so that one is a yellow, so they're gonna put that in play. They might do more than that though. Uh, every faction is different. So they gain a population, so they do that again. Uh, and then play this and then exile a card from the market. So they look for the first one that's got nothing. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. So you notice exiles only above that, only above cards with no tokens on it, by the way. That's kind of nifty. All right, this mod is very good. Very good. I am so impressed with mod makers. Uh, this conquer again, they'd get rid of an unrest from their discard, but they don't have one. I think it just goes to their history, right? Uh, and then you put it into the history. Yep. So they're just clearing out, clearing out their deck. Glory. I'm on the edge of glory. So that used to be an other card. 
for the entire game that has been another card, but now it is glory. If able to, you abandon three of those to gain the top one of these. Otherwise, spend all of your brick, oh no, and discard a number of cards from the bot deck equal to half the materials pay rounding up. I don't even know how that'd work when they have 39. That's got to be errated. Hold on. <laughs> That's got to be errated. There is no way. Come all without. Come all within. All right. Otherwise, play the top card of your dynasty into the discard. Okay. All right. Yeah, they errated that. I was about to say, there's no way. Oh, so I need to be looking at this, not that chart. So here we go. Thankfully, now, would that have messed up anything over here that we did in the beginning? Well, I'm going to hold it here for a second. You guys can decide if that would have messed something up. I don't think it changed anything in the first half, but man. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, they would have been exile. Oh, they did do that. They did exile. Uh, would they exile here? Yeah, they exiled here. All right, we're good. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. But yeah, that because that's, I mean, that was clearly broken, that glory thing. <laughs> like, discard, what? What was, what was that stupidity that was on there? I don't even want to know how bad that just seems. Yeah, discard all of their things to discard cards. I mean, they would just literally continue to discard for like 10 minutes. Yeah, no, that makes no sense. But thankfully for them, not us, they do have three of those. So again, I'm going to use the correct chart over here um, in the errata. So again, the benefit of holding off and not buying now, I guess, is you get the second printing. Um, but they do have first printing stuff on, well, I guess I don't know if it's first or second printing on Amazon. Uh, so abandon three, which they did. Again, abandon keyword uh, to get one of those, to gain the top one of those. Otherwise, place the top card of the dynasty. So, wait, what does it say they do? They, uh, to gain it, gain it, which means it goes to your hand for us, which means for the bot, our hand is the top of their deck. So when they gain something, it goes to the top of their deck. So, badink. So they gain the top one of those. And then where does this go? Glory just stays, right? Otherwise, place. Uh, yeah. Well, we're not. We're not doing that. So there is no otherwise. All right. So we are done with their turn. We're going to refill their spots. We're going to do all that stuff. They are really thinning down their deck. I mean, they've really <laughs> thinned it down. All right. So I do have three city cards. So I could discard up to three cards to both cycle through my deck and or um what is this free play choose to draw a card or put a card from your hand or disc pile card into the history but I'm, I'm trying to buy this card so that would be one of my plays this turn is to get these two brick here and i get to give another player a card from my hand or discard so actually i can discard this unrest so i'm certainly going to discard an unrest to get one of these then what's celtic gold oh well i don't have any of those so that's not very useful i'm definitely going to discard this because well it's useless uh and i'll draw a card for that one okay that's a oh i do have two and a glory so there is that so you know what i'm going to discard this and I get, I get, get, get it that it doesn't give me four, but it does give me the one I need now, and I'm going to need it by the end of this turn. So I'm doing that. Although I think I could play a victory point at the end of my turn. I'm not 100% sure about that. Leadership. So choose and draw a card or put a card from your hand or discard pile into your history. Well, we're definitely doing that. So that is a free action. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Not unrest, but one of these cards that I can just never use again. All these cards with the axes on them. That is a part of my ancient history, not part of my future. Um, and then this goes to my discard pile, which it did. So that was a free play. So now, three actions. I'm not going to waste everybody's time with all this nonsense. First one is uh, you can draw a card from your discard pile 
and you can garrison a card. So I'm gonna draw the leadership, play it again. Let's search again. Although at some point, this is not gonna have cards, right? So these guys serve their purpose well. They got me a couple of victory points, but can't use them anymore because I am in an empire. So no longer useful to me. So now this card is becoming less and less useful the more and more I think about it because as I am thinning my deck using other stuff, although I could really just thin it down. Uh, well, anyway, all right. So third action, or second action, I'm sorry, is to play this one because I only played one action to do that. It let me draw a card from my discard pile, which I drew this again and played it again. So now I draw this or play this as my second action. So let's play this action, play this action. I said I wasn't gonna waste anybody's time, but I am because I forgot about this card that I wanna exhaust. So I'm gonna exhaust, which one is it? This one to get a brick for each of my water. I got one water, that's it, just one water. I can exhaust and pay one of those to get two people. I don't need to do that. Although do any of these need a lot of people? two that needs four that needs two no so i'm not really in the people market at this point so it's good to know that i have it because uh, again a victory point is only worth one person or two brick uh solstice we've done that we've done all those if you use my port i didn't acquire a green card so i don't need that and i am done all right so third and final action i'm gonna play my glory card I'm going to take these three. One, oh, and this one underneath. <laughs> and all of them, and put them there. And then I look at the top two cards from this deck, and I get to keep one. So it's seven victory points. Increase your hand size by one. That's pretty good at the end of the game. Free play, steal victory point from each other player. Anyone able to pay gets one. One victory point. See, that's kind of garbage. The one victory point per... Um, Unrest they have because they're they just get rid of unrest too fast and so do I uh, in the solo game That's not great increase your hand size by one. It's worth seven victory points It's not the best thing in the world, but it's not that garbage either and again that cards not garbage It's just not great for me now when we're done with this again The last thing you can do is go for this when you would gain this card instead resolve it then flip this card and it triggers. So again, we're both empires. You gain three victory points and develop for free. So one of your cards for free. So again, if they get this card, I'm gonna be able to develop King of Kings, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I am gonna keep this card in my hand. I do have a six card hand size. So I'm gonna draw three, which, oh, wait, I don't get to do that yet. But ink, but ink, but ink. Uh, all right, so first things first, let's recall all our tokens. Second thing, second, I get to put a victory point on one of these cards up here. Um, kind of like this one. We're gonna we're gonna keep it going. Although this is pretty good too, because this is a green card which gives me stuff. When you gain brick from water in play, exhaust this card to gain a victory point. Oh, and I have a card that lets me get brick from water, so that kind of combos, and I get two victory points per water. Now, I wonder if that's in play or anywhere. If anybody knows the answer to that, let me know. Um, and again, it's gonna calculate my score for me, so it doesn't really matter, but maybe I'd wanna keep water in play at the end of the game is the only reason I ask. All right, so that is the end of my turn. Let's see what they do with their nonsense garbage turn. Boom, yellow, it's coming in play. They're getting a population and something else happens. I don't remember what. Let's go to the right board. Uh, do do do. Yellow gain a population. Play this an exile card from the market. Ha <laughs> ha. Nothing, suckers. Uh, glorious. I think they just uh, exile this card. Uh, not exile. Uh, so they gain a victory point per bot um, thing in play. So they do gain one victory point for that. And put this card in your history. Mad science history and maddling the mysteries. It all started with a big bang. Oracle. So there's no Oracle. If able, return any of those from your discard pile and put it into your history. So that's going to your history. I don't think they have any um, unrest, but I will search and find out. No, they do not. 
it's very hard for them to get unrest there. I thought it was impossible, obviously, at the beginning. This is the same thing put in their history. They are really going to start flying through that deck. Badoom, badoom, badoom. Uh, they, yeah, they got not very many cards in their deck. That is for sure. Oh, by the way, after all that that I did, I forgot to draw up my hand. So let's do the end of my turn before I forget, even though we are done their turn. Uh, and then I'll do the end of their turn before I forget again. <laughs> so I draw up three cards. I need to draw two more. I can buy first, though. Uh, I am going to buy this, which does go into my discard pile. So that costs... Oops, that's not the right one. Passive. Increase your hand size by one and exhaust. You may put a card from your hand into your history. You may put a card from your discard into your history. Yep, that's the one. So that costs me two and two. One, two, and one, two. This one lets me get two people, so I'm really going to focus on getting bricks this turn. I want to get three to be able to develop this at the end of my next turn. Although, let's be honest, I'm probably not gonna be drawn at the end of my next turn because there's 13 cards in there. So maybe I'm a little smarter than that. And, uh, <laughs> well, this one gives me four anyway, Celtic Golden. So I don't really need to do that right now. So maybe I do focus on getting people or drawing cards to just get through my deck. All right, so that was the end of my turn. I apologize for messing that up. We're gonna do the end of their turn. Again, we just refill the row. They're getting victory points every time. They might trigger the end of the game by going through their deck. Um, and then they put more cards up here, and then that three spot did get an extra victory point. Which makes it more attractive, because I was looking at it anyway. But we'll see. We'll see. Because certainly getting lands out is a pretty good option as well. Ooh. Is there a good green one out there? I thought there was. When you gain brick... Now remember, this is a, it's a combo, but do I really want to do it? We'll see. Um, all right, let's increase my hand size again. So I'm awe-inspiring and I've got the Mighty Quinn who is also very awe-inspiring. So I am getting two cards. Come all without, come all within. No, you ain't seen nothing like a Mighty Quinn. So I can put something on top of my deck, which I don't really need. And I can garrison a card. And everybody else gains one, but I get four. Well, I'm not going through my cards this turn. So maybe I do that. All right, I'm gonna play this as my second action. And then you may place a card of your choice from your discard pile. Oh, well, never mind. That was not as useful. Wait, did I not discard cards? Hold on. I'm an idiot. Hold on. <laughs> yes, I never discarded cards to get the stuff at the beginning of my turn. All right. So, Celtic Gold, discarded. Elders, discarded. Um, do I want to discard? Well, so the first one I'll discard to draw a card. Ooh, that's the third one. Yeah. So then I'll discard these two because I have three cities now. So one, two, three, that lets me discard three. The first one I drew a card with, which got me the other location. And then with the other um, two, I am gonna go ahead and get brick. No, I'm gonna get two people, two population. All right, then for my three actions, again, Make it quick. Um, you may place a card of your choice from your disc card, card pile on top of your deck. We're gonna put Awe-Inspiring on top of our deck. Not gonna garrison a card with this one, and I'm not gonna garrison a card with this one. Now, I can take a free action to do this, to gain a brick. Um, and I'm not gonna pay the three brick to do anything else. Not gonna exhaust to get two population. Those are only during setup, so, yep. All right, I got three out, and I got my glory card in my hand. So I actually kind of hope, and I don't think it's really possible unless they get two yellow and then their glory card, I kind of hope they end the game, or end that part there, so I can get the end of the game bonus. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how that ends up happening. I got to get this card, though. No question. Got to get this card, because it gives me a victory point per green card in my deck, and we know that I've added... 
millions of green cards in my deck. I'm not going to calculate my score. There is a update your score here. I'm tempted, but I'm not going to do it. Um, all right. So uh, I have that glory card in my hand. I'm definitely not getting rid of. I'm going to draw five more cards, but I am not to the end of my deck. Uh, so I've got some stuff. I've got some stuff going on. Oh, I'm going to need to draw some cards. I'm going to need to discard and draw a little bit this turn because I need to get through the end of my deck next turn for sure because the end of the game is nigh. So when the end of the game is triggered by either them going through their deck or us triggering this or this running out, all of which are kind of pushing toward the end there, we all get one extra turn after that last solstice. So, um, yeah, it's getting close to the end of the game. Uh, again, I've got the glory to push through the next one. So we'll see what happens. Come on without. Come on within. No, you ain't seen nothing like the mighty Quinn. All right, X. Uh, so return it from your discard pile. And then put this card into your history. Mad science history, unraveling the mysteries. It all started with a big bang. Bang! All right, same thing. History. Yeah, they're just... Oh, is Nomads different? Is Nomads a special card? Nope. Glory is the only special card they care about. There's Glory. Uh, all right. So they don't have that, though. So it doesn't trigger the infinite loop that it did. Uh, they can't abandon three. Otherwise, place the top card of your dynasty deck into the discard pile oh man all right so this is their dynasty deck they're getting this so they just got three victory points for that that ain't that ain't cool that ain't cool at all um and then what happens to this card glory and then i mean i guess they just discard it because it doesn't say what else to do so boom all right so they are done their turn you know, I didn't do the end of my turn. I don't think I put a glory on one of these, but I don't care. I'm not going to do it. Yeah, it's sometimes hard to keep track, and certainly we all know that I am not the best. I think they just went through their deck again, so they had another one. So they really, they've got one card left here. Um, it's not good. It's not good. So I got to desperately get this card. Um, I mean, I'm certainly going to get this card, but I don't know if it's even what I want. Well, we'll see. All right, so I'm going to play this for free to get a population. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. Stop. All right, am I discarding cards? Increase your hand size by one. You may put a card from your hand and one from your history in your or in your discard. All right, I'm going to do this. No. I'm going to put this advance here and draw a card. Draw a card from your hand or put a card from your hand. Wait, draw a card or put a card from your hand or discord pile in your history. Well, I don't need that because I already have this person to do that. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to discard this to draw another card. All right, that's just a thing. This will let me draw a card though. Hmm. Not going to be able to play everything, right? So... Well, actually, I am going to be able to play all three of these. Do I care about my hand size being one bigger and getting rid of a card from my deck? It feels like I do, so I'm going to just discard this one because I already have three. All right, so what am I going to increase with that? My brick? Yeah, because I want this four brick cost card. Now... I don't remember if I did this last turn, but whatever. I think I did. Um, so I'm going to do this to get a brick for each water symbol. So I got one water symbol. Yeah, so that's only one brick. But that does get me to four, which is what I need for this one. So that's okay. All right. So again, these are all free actions that I'm doing here. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is glory. Cannot be garrisons. Abandon three cards to get the top to do the top two cards. So one, two, three, go away. And I just get this card. Uh, free play, steal one from another player. Uh, if anyone is unable to play, pay, they do whatever. All right, so this is a free play. Obviously I'm gonna do that. I get a victory point, they lose a victory point. 
that is a pretty good card in a multiplayer game because it's from each other player. Like getting that early is pretty stupidly good. Now I did get that in my multiplayer play and did not end up winning, but it's still good. I think I got it as my first draw, which is like pretty ridiculous. But if you don't like it, you think it's too good. I don't know. I haven't read about it. I'm just saying you could take it out of the, the game. Uh, do, 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 do. So I'm going to pay one to put on inspiring out. Again, multiple benefits. One, it adds the number of cards up here, which adds to bonus victory points potentially, but increases your hand size by one, um, which is good. So, Awe-inspiring and the Mighty Quinn. And then I got one more thing I can do. Oh, well, this is a free play. It just gives me a person, but ink. And then I get to play this as my last action. I don't care about the unrest because remember, I do have a card that uh, ignores two unrest. So I'm going to play this. Passive, increase your hand size by one. Oh, that's another in-play card. Huh. Uh, and exhaust it. You may put a card from your hand into your history. You may put a card from your discard pile into your history. And I'm going to do that. So I'm going to exhaust it to do that. And remember, I can ignore up to two unrest cards. So that's why I don't necessarily care about it. And let's search and see what here is pretty, pretty useless. That is not useless. That is not useless. That probably is not useless. Ah, here you go. Here's one with some axes on it, which again, was great early in the game, but at this point of the game, not able to play that. All right, so can't exhaust anything else. I don't think I could exhaust this to get two people, but I don't want to. All right, so my hand size is up to seven now. There's only four cards here, so I am gonna be able to buy a card, which is really what I wanted. And I got the last card from here, which doesn't count. You trigger the end of the game when you get the King of Kings which I don't have right now, but I should be able to get it real quick. It's We're really to the very accelerated part of this game. Um, so let us do, 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 recall all of our stuff. All right, so I'm gonna put a victory point on one of these. I really probably don't care. Uh, I just don't wanna set them up for a lot of victory points. So I'll put it on this little one over here. So that's now worth three. All these are worth three, not really caring. Okay. Uh, did that, so I'm now gonna draw my card. So I draw four here, and then I'm gonna buy this one for uh, do, 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 four materials, goes into my discard, I reshuffle it. My hand size is now seven, not uh, four. So there you go. Ooh, I do have glory. So if I put all these things out, oh wait, oh that's a free play. No, all right. We'll see. I may have two more turns. And uh, so, yeah, I got nine cards in my deck, though. It, we'll, we'll see what happens here. Um, sorry. So their turn. They're on the edge. Uh-oh. Of glory. That's population. That's not good because I don't want them to get this um, before me. They're on the edge. The edge. Uh, all right. Oh, no. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. What do they do? So I gave them a population. They got that card. Gain a population and exile a card from the market. Well, I believe the market is full of unexilable cards. It is. So same thing, though. I think those cards are before. Oh, no. They are not. Axe cards are first. Put it into your history. Never mind. Oh, so they don't let them, interesting. They don't let them, just like you can't play this card, they can't play it either, basically. So <clears throat> if they had an unrest, they get rid of it. Interesting, interesting. Well, doesn't matter. There's their population and there's their third card. Don't get a glory, don't get a glory, don't get a glory, don't get a glory. Son of a stupid, stupid, stupid. Ah! <laughs> All right. So they abandon all three of theirs. They gain the top card of that deck. Otherwise, place card on top. All right, so they don't do any of that, actually. Because uh, it is that is errated as well. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. And I think the cards that were errated, they fixed. Uh, so, King of Kings. So replace 
uh, on page 10. Replace the King of Kings section with the following. If the bot would gain the King of King cards and is in the Barbarian state, which they are not, it is instead gains six progress cards. If the bot is in the Empire state, it instead gains three progress and... Uh, so progress is victory points. One, two, three. And draws the top card of the Dynasty deck, placing it on top of the bot deck. This triggers the end of the game. All right. So they are going to discard this. And they're going to discard these three. They get this on top of their deck, actually. And it triggers the end of the game, which again means we have one more phase each. And this gets flipped. So if you notice on this side, you get a three victory and a free development. On this side, you just get a free development. So that is a shame. I basically lost out on three victory points there. Uh, Victor, Victor Von Doom says, Shadows of Pa, I mean glory, drink. Hey, you know what, Victor? You're right. So for those of you who don't know, when we play Marvel Champions, we always get Shadows of the Past and we always take a drink for that. This is glory, drink. Thank you, Victor. You're keeping me honest here. Ah, and I was parched. All right, so that is a shame. Am I going to be able to discard? I can discard up to three cards here. So I'm not getting my glory. I'm not getting these cards out. So let's stop worrying about glory. It's not going to happen. This is my last round. So I would have to get three yellow cards out. That would be three actions. And then I would have to play that. All right. So let's focus on getting through my deck as fast as possible. So I need to discard. So I draw to seven. So I only need to discard three cards uh, from my deck, which I can do because I have three cities. So we're going to focus on discarding cards. And oh, by the way, this should have had this from the end of my last. Oh, no, from the end of the turn before. So it doesn't matter. Um, I don't think I just bought that. I did just buy it last turn. But remember, we get rid of these tokens before <clears throat> we have to do our buying. All right, but I do want to discard three cards or draw. I want to draw at least two. So that would be seven left. No, I need six left in here. So I need to draw through three cards from your discard pile on top of your deck. Well, that ain't happening. So I'm getting rid of that to get a brick. Well, there's no reason to keep this Conquer card because I can't use... It's a Barbarian card. So we'll do that to get a brick. Huh. Free play. Draw the top card of your deck. Okay, so I can do that. That'll be my third one. Oh, what am I doing? I don't get those bricks. No, no, no. I'm drawing two cards. What the heck am I thinking? Advance. <laughs> oh my gosh. I almost messed that up. All right, so this lets me, as a free play, draw the top card of your deck. And choose to discard it or put it in your history. Doesn't matter. All right. So that'll be my third card. So I am going to get one brick out of that. Wow. That was almost disaster. <laughs> because I'm an idiot. All right. So that was my three cards I get to do during the solstice phase. And again, they're going to get one more turn. So actually, I should refill their slots and do their last turn. Oh, man. They got another one. So they ended the game that way as well. Um, so both ways they have finished the game. Um, but this is the last turn. They do get their last turn. All right. You may draw a card from your discard pile. You may garrison a card. Well, do I have any free cards that are really good? I mean, that's going to be a free card. That's a decent card. I can acquire cards with that, which isn't the worst thing in the world. And I, oh. I can acquire cards with that as well. And that's green cards, which will let me burn them at the very end of the game, which isn't the worst thing in the world. When you gain a brick from... Okay, and I was talking about getting this anyway. And this is another card in play. Hold on. So that is worth a victory point if I can get that into play. Um, So I got to do that. All right. So first card I'm playing is this. That's an action. Uh, so he gets a victory point. But... I get to get this without getting the unrest. So I break through for that. Then I'm going to play this card because again, that gives me nine cards in play, which one of these cards, this one gives me 
uh, one victory point per three cards in play, excluding um, territories. So that is my second play. Now, I can... Oh, I can't get water from this. So I could... Do either... Does this have water in it? No. All right, so this is a free play. Draw the top card of your deck and choose to discard it, return it to the top of your deck, or put it in your history. So let's do that. That's a free action, and I do need to do that. And I'm going to discard it. Because actually, something lets me draw that, or play that. You may draw a card from your discard pile. You may garrison a card. Do I do druids? I mean, that just gives me a victory point. This lets me acquire... Oh, 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 oh. When I acquired that green card, let's not forget to give them an unrest. Ha <laughs> ha, suckers. Although I don't think the bots gain victory points, negative victory points for unrest. Uh, I don't remember how the bot scores, in all honesty. We can look at it at the end. Um, all right. I guess none of this really matters, so I might as well get the victory point. Although, if there's a green card worth victory points... Because this... Uh, but it acquires... It acquires a card. Well, so this card's worth four victory points right here to acquire. One, two, three, plus the one on itself. This card is worth no victory points, but four also. This is worth two, and then the times two, but I'd get an unrest as well. Uh, and I can't play it, so it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm just taking stuff for victory points here. This is worth four victory points. I do get an unrest, but one per 10 cards? I certainly have more than 20 cards, don't I? In all my piles? I mean, that's nine right there, 10. Oh. So that was in play. That's still six, nine. Those don't count. How many cards? Eight more there. Six more there. I mean, that feels like three victory points at least. All right. So that seems like the right play is to acquire this card. So I'm going to take this one here. Although every green card I get is worth two victory points. Can't forget that also. But these are worth more than two. All right. So, I'm going to play him for my third action. I can acquire any type of card, and I put this into my history. So, that's in my history. Acquire any type of a card. I am going to acquire this card right here. All right. So, I'm going to discard all of these cards at the end of my phase. Well, first things first, I put a victory point on something. I'll just put something, I'll put it on something that doesn't have one. Although, no. Just put it here. Fine. Oh, no, no, no. Well, it's fine. Doesn't matter. All right, so I'm going to put it there. I'm going to discard all my cards. Oh, man. I don't have enough to pay. I, could, I have to pay victory points because I'm an idiot to pay for one of these cards. All right. Well, anyway, so I discard cards. I recall all my tokens. Then I draw up to my hand size of seven. So that's six. I get one more. So I can pay for one of these if I think it's worth it. There's only... Oh. <clears throat> oh, this one I could pay three people for. So there's zero reason not to do that. I got plenty of people here. Three people. I mean, I don't care about anything. They're all worth four victory points. Literally, none of the rest matters to me at this point because my game is over. All right, so that's how my hand looks at the end of the game. They get one final turn. Because I'm on the edge of glory. And I something, something, something with you. All right. Oops. <laughs> Not useful. Oh. That is the right one. Okay. All right. So what card did they get? Kurgan's. Which does have an infinity symbol. So let's see. If able, spend five. Yes, they can. One, two, three, four, five. To break through for one of those. Otherwise, discard the top card from the bot deck. Put this card into the history. They definitely will be able to break through for one of these cards. Which is worth the most victory points. That's worth five. That's worth five. This is worth two. Plus two is four. So they're going to take one of these. They take the first one. 
they break through so they don't get the unrest um, and that is done and then this goes into their history I think that's the same thing again uh, city of so that's an infinity symbol yep it's before all those so again spend five one two three four five uh, breakthrough for one of those so that's another five victory points for them oh no stop breaking through send it to history all right so this is a blue card uh, I'm pretty sure that that's the only thing that applies here uh, so just gain a victory point and put it into history and a yellow card <laughs> which is just gain a population but ink and put this card into play and exile card from the market so they put this into play doesn't matter because they don't have glory and they exile a card the first one that they can is this one all right so that's the end so i don't know if this is going to work honestly uh final scoring is not a mystery to me but uh it's definitely something i got to pull out a pen and paper for um to figure out every time but i can kind of walk you through it so i'm going to get a victory point for each of these which is clearly 20. then all the ones with question marks all the ones with those you can get variable up to 10 each question marks it scores on the specified if you meet the condition we didn't really get any of those uh score every card in your hand play area draw deck pile history and things you don't score undeveloped cards so i don't score these two cards but I score everything else. The way the bot scores, let's go to the bot scoring. It's a little different, but not much, honestly. Um, do, 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 do. When triggered, complete the round as normal, then play one final round, including resolving the solstice effect on any of your cards. So actually, I could get resources, but I don't know that I need to do that, so whatever. Uh, add up your victory points in the same way as for the multiplayer game. Calculate the bot's victory points. So theirs is worth one for every one of those. They get 11. Uh, for every 10 of those, they're going to get uh, in any combination. So they're going to get three points for that. Uh, score the cards in the bot's hand and discard pile. Do not score cards in the bot's dynasty deck. Cards with those. Oh, they do get negative points. So I, I am glad I burned them at the end there. That's going to be worth negative two victory points. That's going to be worth plus victory points. These are worth five each. And this, which they don't get, they get the highest number of victory points. So it's as if they achieved that card uh, is basically what it is. If you scored more points in the bot, you win. If you scored equal to or less, you lose. So there is a win or lose. Calculate final score. Uh, Goose MVP score 108. Bot score 64. I have no idea if that's right. I don't want to go through uh, and go double check them uh check your notebook for score results so where's my notebook oh look at this uh maybe score results check your notebook for score results why is it locked what do i gotta go to yellow oh no score results i'm green ah all right so i get 20 for my uh progress a city is worth one victory point. Another city is worth one victory point. Another city is worth one. And a port is worth one. Awe-inspiring is worth seven. So let's see. Awe-inspiring is worth seven. That's right. Okay. All right. Uh, Olheim script is worth four. I'm just curious now. Like, Olheim script is worth four. Yep, that's right. Okay. I mean, those are the easy ones. I'm, I'm curious if they get the, the messed up one. Machiavellius is nine and elders is nine. Machiavellius and elders, but I think those are just printed cards. So those are the easy ones for them to do. These are all the print. Question victory points, none. So Quinn is worth three victory points. Let's see if they got that right. Quinn is worth three. So one victory point for every three. Yeah, nine. Boom, look at them. Wow, whoever did this bot. All right, shut off is four they're shut off all right victory point per two water or two victory points per water so apparently i had two water symbols i guess that's anywhere 
because clearly they're not in play. Oh, I got two in my hand. So that is the four victory points for Shut Up. Let me draw all 11 cards. Now I'm curious. Do I have any other? Because I have a lot of other territories. Nope, that one doesn't have. Nope, that one doesn't have. Yeah, just the two that they had. All right. Wow. All right, I'm impressed, Mod Maker. Uh, I will put the link to the mod in the thing. Uh, exports three. Minorius, do do do. Celts is seven victory points. So apparently I had seven green cards at the end of the game. One, two, it looks like in my hand. Three, four. Oh no, this one's not green. Three, four, five, six, seven. So I had none in my. Uh, well, you get out of the way. I had none in here? Really? Is that what you're trying to tell me? And that's probably right because I got rid of the ones with the axes on them. Oh, did it give me points for the unrest? See, because I had a card that ignored unrest. Let's see, notebook. Let's see if you got that right. Yeah, there's no negative points for unrest. It did ignore two. All right, I don't know who modded this, but bravo. Bravo to you because I tell you, that is one of my least favorite parts of the game is the end game scoring. All right, uh, let's see. So let's go through a couple things. Number one, um, do, 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 this is great, but I wish they had given you this, right? These keywords are so important. Abandon, acquire, breakthrough, exile, find, free play, garrison, history, recall, solstice. I feel like just these and not even all of them, free play and solstice are easy. Um, but the rest of those, it's like the difference between garrison, finding, exiling, breakthrough, acquire, like these keywords right here, this was perfect. Whoever made this player aid, bravo to you as well. So people love this game, obviously. Um, this is a little unexcusable. I mean, we found that one error, like that was pretty bad. Like discard all your stuff and they had 35. I mean, that's pretty bad. So, but at least they fixed it. I'm going to give them all the credit in the world for fixing it. They put it up for everybody to do. Um, so, how many different factions do you have in the base game? Well, there are two base games. There's classics and there's legends. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight, and in legends, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there's eight in there as well. That is a lot of value. This is like a $40 game. Maybe it's a $50 game. And they tell you the complexity rating, by the way, from least straightforward to most. I played the Celts, which is a two. The Greeks is the first faction I played, which, okay, they are very complex. They want a lot of cards and they give you a lot of card draw. So those cards where I was like discarding to draw a card or discarding to get resources, I was doing that all the time with the Greeks. They had tons of card draw, but they also had tons of cards. So, um... Vikings, I haven't tried them yet. Um, this is one of the more complex ones, uh, I guess, but you know, playing against them is AI. But not only do they give you all these, for solo players, they give you, and by the way, again, this just telling me activate, innovate, or revolt, then clean up, I guess it tells you use three actions and five exhausts. I guess it's fine. Like this could have been written better like this. <laughs> Right? Like, that's pretty easy. And then after your turn, you do this. Like, I don't know. Um, there, there were easier ways to do it, but it's fine. Um, you know, this is the first printing. I don't know that they expected it to go as well as it did. So none of that bothers me. Having all these races, having all these different um, factions, you can see there's a lot of depth in there for very little investment. All right, so what are my final thoughts on this game? Well, you could probably tell by watching the gameplay that I was really enjoying myself. There's a lot of interesting actions, a lot of interesting stuff that happens here. You know me though, I always have pros and cons. So what are the cons of this game? It's long. That was a solo game with a lot of bot help. Now granted, I'm still new to the game, so it could go faster if I knew my stuff better and if I was a faster player. I'll, I'll, give, I'll give it all of that. Mike would play in a faster time period. But there is a lot of thinking and there's a lot of stuff you're doing. There's a lot of turns in the game. Now, it's satisfying. It's very satisfying. All those turns are satisfying. But multiplayer, it does go a little bit long. I don't know that I'd ever want to play with three or four players. I did play with three players once and we felt it was long. Now, we're all new to the game. And 
to be fair, you don't have to think about bots turns and stuff like that. I could be planning my next turn instead of doing the bots turn, but for a solo game, it's great. You play your turn, you walk away, you come back later. It doesn't matter. You just, the only thing that's hard in this game, because there's not normal rounds, I, I would almost put a marker on either the enemy's turn or enemy's card so you know it's their turn, the solstice so no, you know you didn't do the solstice yet, or on your player uh, marker so you know that it is your turn and you've already done the solstice. So there is a little bit of weirdness walking away from the table and coming back. That is something I noticed yesterday. I'm like, oh my gosh, is it solstice or is it my turn? Did I do my solstice stuff already? So, and I mean, look, it's not the end of the world if you get it wrong. It is a solo game after all. Um, but, you know, there's a little bit of weirdness with that. There is some downtime. Uh, I did print up the cards that were errated. There are on Board Game Geek also. Somebody made like print files. I actually think the publisher did um, that you could just print and stick in the card sleeves. And Mike sleeves everything, so he's got it in the sleeves. From what I understand, classics is pretty straightforward from what you saw. The, their abilities are straightforward. Playing them is pretty straightforward. Whereas Legends is less straightforward. And I'm interested to play some of the Legends stuff. I have not yet. Um, we don't own that. We only own the Classics version. I say we. It's Mike's game. I'm borrowing it right now. But it's Mike's game. Um, I'm curious to see how much complexity is added. And again, I don't know if I want to play this at higher player counts because of the amount of downtime, the amount of gameplay. It is very thematic though. Like I didn't see it the first couple times I went through, but really classing out of like those barbarian stuff. It's like, well, wait a minute, we're an empire now. We can't do that, you know, barbarian -y stuff anymore. We got to, you know, do really, you know, different type things uh, for uh, going forward. We can't do the same things that got us to where we are now. So I like the teching up. I love how you just shuffle those cards at the beginning of the game. You put them on top of that basically time you turn to an empire card and uh, those come out in a different order each game. S different factions have different cards and that come out in different amounts. Um, you have different number of cards in your deck at, at the beginning of the game. You have different cards in your deck at the beginning of the game. Every um, every one of these cultures plays very, very differently from what I've seen so far. I've only played three or four of them, but like, it's really interesting how they all play differently and playing against them is very different. This one got a lot of brick. The last faction I played against did not. They in fact kept attacking me and I kept getting unrest. I think I was playing against the Romans last time. So there was a lot of that, them giving me unrest cards. I do remember that one card that was take a victory point from every other player and you get them yourself. I didn't win and I did get that pretty early in the last game. And so I was playing it over and over and I was playing Greece. So I was cycling through my cards really fast and playing that card quite a bit. Uh, and I think even cycling it back into my hand and playing it a second time, you saw me do a couple of uh, times there. That was really frustrating, Jerry. It was really getting him angry. Mike didn't care at all. Um, and in fact, I was playing another card, which I shouldn't have with the Greeks, which took away their bricks and gave them population or took away their population and gave them one. I think it was like take away two bricks and give them one population or take away two population, and give them one bricks. Well, the thing I was giving Mike, he needed for his end game scoring. So he was stacking up on something because I kept giving it to him. So that was a mistake. You know, that was a newbie mistake. I do think even playing it at higher player counts, even if I was willing to do it again, which I think I would be because I do like the game enough to do that. I... <sighs> I almost would like to teach this game the way I teach Arnak, which is I want to sit down with somebody and I might not even play through a whole game of this with them because again, it is fairly long, but I almost want to play a solo game with them where they're controlling their solo actions, but I can guide them through any of the questions they have because again, acquiring versus whatever those words are. I don't even remember them anymore. I, I always forget them. Like those are so hard to get through your first game in addition to everything else you're trying to learn about gameplay that I think if I can explain a card to somebody, it's like, oh, this card does this, this card does this. If I could explain it to them really quickly and get them up to speed and then maybe they play through a half game, whatever else, or somehow we accelerate it so they can get to the end. First of all, they won't have to think about the AI because I would run the AI for them. So that's a level of burden off of them. So it's not like they're truly playing the full solo game. They just have to still focus like a multiplayer game on their hand. The difference is they're not playing against me and they don't have to worry about what I'm doing and they don't have to worry about showing me their hand or whatever else. I can help them understand the cards in their hand, 
but they're not burned with the AI turn. So I really like teaching games that way now, um, but at least heavier games. And I know Arnak is not a heavier game, but the people I'm teaching it to are not heavy gamers. And so I think that's a really good way. I was not much of a solo player, but this is really getting me into it. It lets me share an experience with my family, with my daughter, my son, who don't like playing games with me a lot of times because they feel like they're gonna lose before they even start. I feel like it's the same way for my wife. When we play it, so there's no co-op mode for this game, but I do feel like playing it solo with them is a way for me to bond with them. And it's like we're having a co-op experience, even though I'm not alpha gaming, I'm not doing anything else. What I'm doing is almost like a DM in a role-playing game where I am guiding them through the experience. And I think games like this that are a little bit higher on the learning curve, certainly a little above where they'd be normally comfortable playing, I think would go really well with me running that experience for them. So this one's great. I, I see why people are calling it their top game, whatever else. People are going nuts over it. Certainly as a co-op game, or as a solo game, I'm sorry, this game is great. And the only complaint I have for multiplayer is downtime. And again, the downtime's not as bad as it seems because if people are doing what they're supposed to be doing, which is looking at their cards when it's not their turn, and when somebody else is doing whatever, they're focused on what they're going to do next on their turn. And it's not, oh, it's my turn now. What am I going to do? Let me read my five cards, six cards, seven cards. If they're not doing that, then the game should be smooth and go quicker. We were playing with two new players when I played, and I was one of them, and I could not get the terminology at all. And he, I never got the rule book. So I didn't get to look up stuff because I feel like when it wasn't my turn, I could have looked it up, but I was waiting till my turn came around to ask questions. I'm like, what does this do again? How do I do this? Where do I get this card from? So I think if I had known there was a, that quick reference uh, word guide in there, I would have grabbed the rule book and just had that in front of me and it would have gone smoother. But teaching you two new players, the game was pretty long, but I do think, because I haven't played it beside that one game multiplayer, I do think there is an opportunity for this game to go quicker than I think it would. So I'm not saying it's bad at higher player count. I'm saying my experience at higher player count was bad. Remember, this is initial impressions and this is a co-op podcast also. So take that with a grain of salt as well. So this is co-op and solo. I think the solo is good for more than just playing by yourself. I think it is great for that. Uh, and by the way, there's five levels of difficulty as well. We were in the middle one. Uh, I did start at the easy one when I first played. I think it's pretty easy. So I'm not sure how hard it gets at higher difficulty levels. I don't know if there are things you can do. You could certainly start them with more victory points at the beginning of the game, right? There, there's many things you can do to do it. Um, to, to give yourself more of a challenge. So I don't think that should be a problem. There are definitely ways to scale difficulty um, with this one. So I don't know, it's a winner for me. Again, this is only my third time soloing it, I think. So, um, but I've enjoyed all the times, but we do have a lot of, uh, not a lot of chat, but we got some chat. Kevin says, uh, did they update the solo mod on TTS? Um, I don't know if they updated the solo mod, but they seem to have updated this, uh, it says acquire garrison, put it into your history, recall, abandon. Yeah, I mean, all those words, it's like, they mean absolutely nothing to you the first time you look at those cards and they're like all over them. And it's not like the cards are very different, right? From each other. I mean, it gets acquire garrison, put into your history, recall, abandon. I mean, they're different words, but boy, like when you just see a bunch of those at the beginning, it's like reading another foreign language. So again, I'm gonna put links as soon as I'm done, uh, stop this video. I'm definitely gonna put links in to the uh, BGG links for the player aids that I showed you today. The first one will just be the multiplayer one, which will be great. That's the one with the keywords and everything else and how to do your stuff. And it even has a great setup guide in there, which is one of the things that I think is easy and intuitive after you've done it once. But the first time you do it, you'll be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like with the setup. So there is a little bit of a barrier to getting into this game, but I think it's worth it is the bottom line here. Uh, we also got Cilia that says, I play solo with my husband the same way, Peter. I totally get it. Yeah, I. you know what? It's, it's something I never thought of before. And actually, I think Mike did it at a convention. It wasn't even with a new player. It was just somebody else they wanted to experience the game with together. So you can definitely turn solo games into co-op experiences. And again, especially 
it's so hard to get people into these games sometimes these more complex games it's not just all of our games look some of these games behind me code names games like that it's not hard to get people in you could play with them the first time um i mean even that has a little bit of a barrier uh how about team three there you go there's definitely not much of a barrier there um but some of these games can be so hard to get people in and if you just crush them because you will if you've played hundreds of games and they played zero games you're going to crush them why why put them through that experience just put them through the zero level easiest bot. Don't play on the level of bot that you would play yourself. Don't go, well, it's way too easy. And let me tell you, I did that. I played the Arnak uh, with my wife and my kids the first time. And I've set it on green, which people said is way too easy. And they crushed it by like, you know, they had 60 points to 40 and they didn't care. They didn't, they weren't upset that they beat it so easily. They weren't like, well, I'm never doing that again. They were like, yeah, I kicked butt. They were super happy they did well. You know, don't introduce people to this hobby by just crushing them yourself or putting them on super hard mode or whatever else. I've made that mistake with Marvel Champions way too many times. I'm like, well, I'll be bored if we just play a, a new boss or a standard boss. No, it doesn't matter. Play at their level. Don't play at your level and introduce them. And I think you and them will have a much better time. So I'm really loving these. I'm not going to call this a Euro. I mean, I might call it a Euro. It's kind of a civ building game. It's kind of a deck building game. At the end of the day, you're just scoring victory points. And you're getting cards with victory points. You're collecting resources. Mike wouldn't want me to call it a Euro, but it's, I mean, I definitely feel like it's a Euro. So these solo Euro games where you're just collecting resources, doing stuff like that, I, I really feel, and it's a hybrid, of course, you know, it's not 100% Euro, but um, I, I feel like, the solo mode is a really good way to introduce people. So, and this one does really well. I'm having a lot of fun with it. So, uh, Kevin says Persians and Mesa Macedonians are two of the more tough bots I have faced from the classic box, uh, on level five, they run away with the game. It's crazy. So again, that's kind of expert mode, right? But maybe for those two civilizations, you play with them on level four or you play with them on level three to get the difficulty right. The nice part about difficulty scaling in games, and again, you can scale it however you want, is you do what you want with it. Especially in a solo game, you enjoy it however you want to enjoy it. If you like those hard games, like those games where you get crushed 95% of the time, you play on that level for you. When you want an easier experience and you just want to have fun and experience the mechanics, you can play that way too. So I don't know. There's a lot of good in playing games solo outside of just playing games by yourself. And there is a lot of good in being able to learn the game so you can teach it during these solo modes as well. So, but getting back to this one specifically, my initial impressions after four or five games, which is usually enough for me to do a review, honestly, Although I feel like I'm in the high point with this game, I don't know if I keep playing, if I'm gonna get bored with it, if it's gonna get stale. That I'm curious to see. I can't imagine it would with eight different factions. I do wanna feel how similar some of them feel. I know some of them are way out there. I mean, look, I played Gaia Project hundreds of times and those factions can be different, but you're doing similar things each game and I haven't got bored with that one. So I think there might even be more variety here. Although the cards in the market you're buying from are similar each game. Although you don't see all of them. They do take some of them out. Uh, no, not the market ones. Those are the victory point cards. So they all will make it in the big main deck of market cards. Uh, so I don't know. I, I, I was worried about player scaling at first. I don't think it has a player scaling problem because it has cards you add in for the three and four player game to make it a little bit longer that way. So I don't think there is a player scaling problem as far as like too much unrest or whatever else because every player's deck starts with unrest and things like that so there are ways to introduce more unrest to the system so the odds of like getting that unrest loss is lower and lower um it's not lower and lower it it scales based on number of players which i was originally worried about they've done some really clever things in the design here as a uh, designer myself i really appreciate a lot of the stuff they've done here so I mean, for me, it's a huge thumbs up right now. It's one of my favorite games that I played lately. It's definitely up there with Gaia Project. I think, I think it's probably up around the same level as Arc Nova, which is weird because one's a tiny forty dollar card game and one's a pretty big game. Again, a lot of cards. Gameplay is not similar, but they're both pretty thinky, and they both are a little bit longer than what I typically would like. 
So I don't, I say that, but Gaia Project's not a short game either, but I love it no matter how many times I play it. So I don't know, but I can play Gaia Project in an hour. This, I don't know that I can get down to an hour. Certainly not at this point, but again, I played it so many times in my life. I mean, shoot, I play Marvel Champions for two or three hours. So what am I talking about? That's my number one. So I don't know. Maybe it's the level of intensity that I have to be here for an hour. Um, like every card play, I'm like, oh, do I play this or this or this? I mean, there's a lot of uh, excellent decisions throughout the course of the game. So a huge thumbs up. I think you're going to know from watching whether you're this is going to be the kind of game for you or not. Um, Celia says, fun playthrough, Peter. Feels like this is going to come back to my table soon. Thanks for the singing. Yes, by the way, all my streams I sing not necessarily on purpose. It just comes out. I'm not the best singer in the world. I don't claim to be. By the way, I do have a TikTok channel too, where I do have board game songs. I only have like five TikToks on it, but uh, it's under One Stop Co-op Shop. Uh, if you're part of our Discord, there there's a whole channel in there for all the TikToks. I mean, like I said, it's only five or six. I do some quick uh, one minute reviews. I've just started doing it like for the last week now. I have sang some songs though also about uh, board games. They're all board game related songs uh, that I made up the words for myself. So it's fun. Uh, I'm enjoying doing that. Uh, so Kevin says the cards from the market are the same, but it does, uh, but it doesn't help you the same with each civilization in my opinion. So because you're trying to do such different things, like my civilization wanted those green, which are the uncivilized cards, because of that, it led me to get more green cards than I normally would. It, I got more cards in my tableau, those cards that were there all the time. I had nine cards in that. That did not at all happen with the Greek civilization. I was really trying to thin my deck as much as possible by putting them in my history, places like that, but really getting as many cards as I could. It didn't matter what type. Um, I was just trying to fill my hand because that you, you scored more points the more um, the more cards you got. Uh, Kevin also says, by the way, even when playing super fast, each solo game I'm playing of Imperium takes me around an hour and I've played the game like 27 times. So there you go. Fast play for an expert. It's going to take about an hour. So it's going to be on the heavier end, which is weird, again, for the price, the size of the box, the number of components. I mean, this game is literally just cards, but... It plays like a way bigger game than that and a way heavier game than that. I, I guess there's tokens for the victory points and, and stuff like that. But, I mean, it's just cards and tokens. And, I mean, it's brilliant. The design, honestly, is brilliant. Now, does that mean everybody's going to like it? No, absolutely not. Some of the best design games in the world I absolutely hate because I don't like the mechanics of them. But the design of this is I'm not going to say flawless, but it's brilliant. There's a lot of good things in this game. And I didn't see it my first play, and you might not either. It may take a couple of plays. If I did impressions the way I do sometimes after just one or two plays, it would be very different than where I am now after playing it several times. So I definitely recommend getting it. I did I just saw it on Amazon for like 40 bucks today. I might even pick up a copy myself. I know Mike's got one, but I might want to have one here for me to play as well. Uh, every time I play it, I'm just enjoying it more and more. Uh, Victor says, my daughter saw one of your TikToks and declared it is the best she's ever seen. So you have one fan. All right. Well, thanks, Victor. I appreciate that. I don't know how old your daughter is, but I am glad she enjoyed the uh, singing. Oh, there you go. It was the one where you were parodying the Friends theme song. Yes. My daughter loves Friends. Uh, my daughter and I watched that together. So uh, that was a little bit of a tribute to her. Uh, I don't even remember what I sang about. I think it was co-op, uh, co-op games and getting into the hobby. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> TikTok is fun for me because, I mean, this video right here took me, what, three, four hours to put together um, of playing a TikTok I can put together in like 10, I mean, sometimes two or three minutes. You, you could tell with some of them that it was just quick uh, <laughs> throwing it together. Um, but I'm enjoying it. I'm not getting into the whole TikTok culture or whatever. I don't even know what that is or what that means. But I am enjoying putting together videos. The, the software is really good for putting together stuff pretty quickly. It's not something that's going to become the focus of our channel ever. But I think it's something that's fun to do. And I think it's a good way to get quick impressions out. And I forgot to do it. Actually, I had Mike and Jerry over and we played two games 
that we could have talked about each of. We played two co-op games last weekend that I really feel like we should have done a quick one minute TikTok of our impressions after we played. I promise I'm going to do it this week if they come over again uh, and we're playing games live again together. So um, it's going to be just a nice place for quick impressions that you're not going to get a full review. You're not going to get a full discussion like we're doing here. It's just something quick. Uh, Victor says she's eight. So there you go. My 10 year old liked it as well. Um, but again, she's a huge Friends fan. Uh, Victor says she's the one that's constantly harassing you on Marvel streams for Lockjaw in chat. Good boy. Lockjaw's such a good boy. Oh, I love my Lockjaw. I haven't put Lockjaw on the deck in a long time, which means it's time for Lockjaw to come back. But anyway, um, I might come back Thursday and do a Marvel Champion stream. If not Thursday, then probably Saturday at some point or Sunday. Uh, I do want to do some more Marvel Champion stuff, even though this week we're not doing Marvel Champions on Friday. Don't forget, we're doing Lord of the Rings. We're going to talk about the new core set uh, on Friday. So look forward to that. And uh, yeah, with that being said, thank you all so much. It was very interactive chat for such a, <laughs> a Euro-based game. You usually don't expect so much chat and so much discussion. So I'm glad people enjoyed it and uh, as much as I enjoyed playing it. So thanks for joining us again, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.